speakers unless they're actually talking, please. And we're ready to start. Is it over to me? Yes. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this virtual meeting of Central Sub Area Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I'll outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue can't be resolved, I'll halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the democratic officer will advise you. The vote will be taken using the raise your hand function on the minutes and then later by the roll call. The um, <clears throat> and the result announced by the Democratic Services Officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting by telephone. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest, or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they'll be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that members of the committee who wish to speak on an item should indicating by using the raise your hand function, which is being monitored by the vice chair. Any members not on the committee or unable to use the raise your hand function who wish to ask a question should indicate by typing X in the chat box. Before we start today's business, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer to ask the committee members to confirm they are present and state their electoral division. Um, Councillor Dyer, you might wish to switch your camera off as well, please, uh, as everyone else has. Thank, thanks very much. Over to the Democratic Services Officer. Thank you, Chairman. Members, I'll now call your name. Please, can you confirm your name and your electoral division member? Councillor Alvey. Yes, here, Councillor Martin Alvey, representing the Fiocan Plain Place Division. Councillor Batters. Good morning, Chris Batters, representing the Lenivet Blizzlin Division. Councillor Brown. Uh, <coughs> good morning, um, <coughs> Councillor Malcolm Brown, St. Austell, Bethel. Councillor Dyer. Councillor Dyer, you're still on mute. <laughs> oh dear. Councillor uh, Dyer, you're still muted. Could you click on the unmute button? <laughs> Councillor Dyer, you're still muted. Are we now in status? Got to take a call, but read the rules there, right? I'll, I'll carry on. I'll come back to you, Councillor Dyer. Councillor Fitter. Yes, I'm here. And can Councillor you see Fitter your decision? Colin, Colin, sorry, excuse me. Colin and St Morgan. Thank you, Councillor Jewell. Yes, hello, uh, Councillor Allen, Joel Fowler, Boslow. John's got his hand up as well. Never... Councillor Kenny. Good morning, Joanna Kenny, Newquay Pentire. Councillor May. Good morning, Councillor May, Penryn West. Councillor Simmons. Yes, good morning, um, Councillor John Simmons, Penryn East, and Myler. Councillor John Thomas. Good morning, all. Councillor John Thomas, Lanron Stithians Electoral Division. Councillor Mike Thomas. Councillor Mike Thomas, representing Halston North Division. Councillor Tudor. Good 
morning, Councillor Tudor, uh, yes. Milestone and Galarath Division. Councillor Williams. Hello. Good morning, uh, good morning uh, everyone. Uh, uh, Councillor Peter Williams representing Mabes and Gluvius and Perna Wardle. Thank you. Councillor Dyer. Yes, dear. Is that better? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Thank you. Oh, Could you well done. Well done. Can you confirm your name and your division, please? Thank you, Councillor Dyer. My name is John Dyer. It has been for a long time. And I represent Chase Water, Kenwyn, and the great metropolis of Balding. And Councillor Greenslade. Good morning, everyone. Fred Greenslade, Councillor for St. Dennis and Nampian. And Councillor Bull. Uh, good morning, everyone. Councillor Jackie Bull, representing St. Austell Polter. Thank you. And also on the line today, we have two division members, Councillor Matt Luke. And Councillor Pete Mitchell. And also joining us by telephone is Councillor Flashman. I can also confirm that the following officers are also present. Matt Stevenson, Development Management Group Leader. Gavin Smith, Development Management Group Leader. Michelle Billing, Senior Development Officer. James Mosley, Senior Development Officer. Robin Watson, Highways Officer. Loretta Commons, Senior Lawyer. Angela Saunders, Meeting Producer. And myself, Emma Code, Democratic Officer. Thank you very much. Straight on to the agenda then, and agenda item one, apologies. Are there any apologies, please, Emma? Thank you, Chairman. I have no apologies for today's meeting. Thank you. Agenda item two, declaration of interest. Are there anyone with any interest, please? No, then we move on to agenda item three, which are minutes of the previous meeting held on the 15th of June 2020. Uh, you've all had those minutes. Uh, are there any um, points for accuracy? And if not, would someone propose, please? Propose, thank you, by Councillor Thomas. Can I have a seconder? You want to? Uh, seconded by Councillor John Simmons. Uh, thank you. Um, now, uh, Democratic Officer, can you confirm that all hands are down, please? Uh, Councillor Thomas, could you just lower your hand, please? Uh, all hands are now lowered. Thank you. So, uh, minutes of the meeting have been proposed and seconded. Could you raise your hand, please, uh, in support? Thank you, Chairman. I have those who voted for the minutes. Thank you. I'm still waiting for a few hands to be lowered. Thank you. Yeah, I can confirm all hands are now lowered. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to agenda item four. Oh, Chair, Chair, could, I, could I ask if there's any voting against, please? Oh, sorry. Yes. No, okay. And, and any No, okay. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the minutes of the meeting have now been confirmed as a correct record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so we move on to agenda item uh, four, 4.1, which is PA2001617. Mr. Pete Crocker, land south of the old stables for school at St. Austell, proposed change of use of the land to a private Romany gypsy site consisting of two gypsy pitches with associated works, including two mobile homes, two touring caravans, two day rooms, and the installation of a septic tank. The case officer is Michelle Billing, who will present now. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Chairman. I'll um, just share my screen for you. Um, so the application is for, um, as um, the Chairman just set out, 
The key issues for consideration are the provision of gypsy pitches and impact upon the landscape character. Um, this is gives you an idea of where the site is. The nearest main facilities are located in Bugle, which is approximately 1.5 meter, um, 1.5 miles to the north. So this is the site here. Um, this is the settlement of Rascola, um, fairly linear. This is the application site here. To access the site, you would travel down the private right of way. As you can see, this private right of way um, is already used by a number of dwellings. So there is all, always already that relationship between pedestrians and vehicles using the public right of way. It is fairly narrow with bends um, and therefore vehicles will be travelling fairly slowly. And it was concluded that the traffic movements associated with two pitches would not significantly increase traffic and therefore it's considered that a safe and suitable access can be achieved. Um, this gives the, um, an idea of the site in its, in its um, landscape context. The nearest residential dwellings are here, approximately seven me 17 metres away. The application site is actually lower than these dwellings and the orientation of the units will be away to the east. Um, so it was concluded that there would be no detrimental impact upon residential amenity. Um, this gives you an idea of how the site is to be laid out. So you've got the access here. You would have um, a static caravan, a day room and a touring with amenity space. And again, you would have a static um, home, a day room and a touring caravan. The site slopes approximately five metres from the entrance to here. Um, uh, it's representation of a typical um, pitch to have a mobile home, a static, a day room and a touring caravan. And this just gives you a, a bit of context of how the site is going to work. This is the road here. So the land level is going to be raised slightly to the east, approximately two metres. This will be gabion baskets here. So this was what the day rooms will look like and um, how the development will sit on the site. So you'd have the mobile home here, the day room here with some amenity area there. Um, just to give you some idea of the site in context, this is the public right of way and this is the entrance into the site. Again, to give you a better idea of how the public right of way is and how the um, access into the site does obscure some views, so you wouldn't get full views into the site. This is looking into the site towards the um, towards the, the southern boundary down here. This is the western boundary that goes along the public right of way. This is the, the northern oh, sorry, I'm going back. This is the northern part of the site here. This is taken roughly with it in the middle of the site. This is the northern boundary here and here this would be the eastern boundary. And as you can see, this just shows the context of the land changes, the land levels in the site. So the gabion baskets would be along here approximately. Again, uh, another picture just to give you an idea of how the site sits within its context and landscape. And um, this is from the entrance looking out to the east. So when considering the application, um, it was taken into consideration that the council are under providing on the provision of gypsy pitches, and this proposal would provide two gypsy pitches towards the identified need. It was considered that the proposal is compliant with policy 11 of the Cornwall local plan. It is accepted that the proposal will result in a localised visual harm to the rural character of the area, um, and the access to the site is considered safe and suitable. Um, the recommendation is to approve the localised visual, visual harm is considered to be outweighed by the benefits of the associated provision of the two gypsy pitches. Um, thank you for that, Chairman. Thank you very much, Michelle.
Uh, we don't have any members of the public speaking in objection, and we have no parish or town council representative, but we do have... Mr. Chairman, Chairman, sorry, can I interrupt? We do have a representative of oh. the parish council, Anne Roberts from Traverbin Parish Council. Right. I'm um, very sorry. Chairman, it's Angela Saunders, meeting producer. I've just spoken to Anne Roberts and the, um, the a supporting speaker, um, and one of them has just arrived, but the other one hasn't. So the first one that I can see, you know, I think is Anne Roberts, but we'll just need to confirm. I'll just admit in a moment. So we have two speakers, from the, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We have two speakers, yeah. Um, the name we just need to um, clarify which speaker has just joined the meeting. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Can you confirm your name, please? Yes, it's Chris Montague. Okay. Um, Chairman, I think we might need to hear Cam uh, Chris Montague speak first, and I'll contact Anne Roberts again in the meantime. Right, that's fine. If, if everyone's happy with that, we'll hear from the agent of the application, Chris Montague, first. Uh, Mr. Montague, you have three minutes starting now. Thanks, Madam Chairman. Members, uh, the application site is owned by Mr. Crocker, who together with his wife own and live in the house at the old stables at Riscola. Mr. and Mrs. Crocker have become part of the settled community at Riscola. This application is to enable their two sons and their families to live in a privately owned site adjacent to their house. If granted permission, the development will add to the identified shortfall of gypsy sites, which are required in accordance with policy 2A and 11 of your local plan. The site is located adjacent to the applicant's house, and whilst this location may be considered to be in the countryside, there are nevertheless other forms of development to the north and the west of the site. Houses are located to the north and northwest, and there is a large modern agricultural building located to the west of the site. As such, the site immediately adjoins other forms of development in the settlement. Your office's report details the extent of the limited visual harm that the development may cause, which as a result of the existing mature boundary hedges and topography of the site will only be viewed from the vehicular access to the site. The parking and turning area are at the same level as the, as the level of the road. The mobile homes are on a level one meter below that of the road and the day rooms are on a level a further meter below that. The floor level of the day rooms being two meters below the level of the road. As such, the only part of the day rooms that you will see from the road is a portion of one gable end and the roof of the day rooms. The retaining walls are below the level of the road, so these will not be seen from the road at all. The day rooms are larger than the recommended size. However, the recommended size is not a required size. At paragraph 48 of your officer's report, it is evident that the council have historically granted permission for larger day rooms, as the council recognised in those applications the need to accommodate the size of the requirements of individual families. The two sons who will occupy these pictures both have young families, one with two children and another with three. The day rooms are not larger, nor are they out of keeping with the scale of other residential buildings in the settlement. The access to the site, the access to the site provides a safe and secure means of access to the highway. There have not been any objections from your highways officer. As a result of the geometry of the highway, this acts to significantly reduce the speed of any vehicles passing the site. And 30 seconds the remain. The development will not have an adverse impact on the safe access. In summary, whilst there may be limited localised visual impact, the site adjoins the settlement, the site adjoins the applicant's house, the development will provide two pictures for the applicant's family, the day rooms are not disproportionately large, safe access exists, and there is a clear and identified shortfall of gypsy sites which this development will provide for. All the reasons mentioned by myself and for those set out in your officer's report, I respectfully request that you support the proposal as set out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montague. Thank you, Emma. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Montague, please? Council Chairman Mike Thomas. Thank you very much, Vice Chairman. Um, uh, Councillor Thomas, would you like yes. to unmute and ask yes, your question? I think I've unmuted. Uh, um, for sake of clarity, the adjacent property is the old stables. 
Is that correct? That's correct, Councillor. Thank, thank you. Question answered. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other questions, Vice Chairman? Not at the moment, Chairman. Right. Chairman, as um, Angela Saunders' uh, meeting producer, um, yes. the Parish Town Council rep, Anne Roberts, I think was having trouble getting through, but she did have an emergency replacement if this happened. Uh, Mr. David Stevens, and I can confirm he's now on the call. Right. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Mr. Montague, for your input and for attending. Uh, we now move on then to uh, Mr. David Stevens uh, speaking on behalf of Councillor Anne Roberts. Uh, Mr. Stevens, you'll have three, three minutes starting now. You'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning. Uh, I'm the parish clerk. No, most of you know me, I think. Um, to Reverend Parish Council, I'll read exactly what uh, Anne Roberts was going to say. To Reverend Parish Council, strongly objects to this application as it is yet another gypsy traveller site within our parish, a region that is saturated with these sites. Recent figures confirm that a large percentage of new applications of this site have been made in the mid Cornwall area. Mr. Crocker's application is a sporadic development with no defined demarcation in the centre of the village of Riscora. For those not familiar with Riscora, it is a tr tiny tranquil hamlet of less than 20 properties in the heart of Clay Country. And life has always centred around the Methodist chapel since 1873. The building in recent years has been restored into a hub for community life and a centre for cultural and educational activities. Properties in the village are mainly granite, stone cottages, converted granite barn buildings, etc. Clearly, this proposed application will be totally alien to the recommended guidance, which states to promote, to promote peaceful and integrated coexistence between the site and the local community. It is very apparent that the residents would not welcome this exact development, but are reluctant to voice their opinions at a public meeting. The size of the proposed day rooms raises concern as they could easily be transformed into living accommodation. And once again, emphasizes the lack of guidance on restrictive sizes in the current formal local plan policy 11. It's difficult to comprehend that this application meets an identified local need and within a two mile radius there are two similar sites, one at Bowling Green, Bugle, which has been empty for over three years with 10 pitches and none in current use and the site at Halley's Road Penwithick owned by Mr N Crocker which also has advertised a number of local available pitches. This one also has been outstanding for over three years. Our parish council takes pride in our local footpaths, which has had great use during the current lockdown. And this development will severely affect the popular walk. That 30 takes seconds people, remain. Take people to the Innes Finnish Lakes from the from Riscola. It is already used by commercial vehicles servicing Mr. Crocker's business and a plumber who lives down the lane. Further traffic will undoubtedly create issues and confrontation. I have shown the committee that this application would have a dramatic impact on the character and appearance of a tiny piece of our parish, which is considered a jewel in our crown. Three Thank minutes, Chairman. Thank you Thank very you much, <laughs> Mr. Stevens. Um, uh, would you feel happy to answer questions if there are any, Mr. Stevens, given that you're yes, representing? Not, not a problem. I'm, I will be speaking on behalf of the council. Thank you very much. Um, Vice Chairman, do we have questions? I, hello, I think I've seen um, Councillor Kenny. Am I right? Councillor Kenny, you have a question? Councillor Tudor yes. has her hand raised. Thank you. Councillor Tudor. Uh, Councillor Tudor, would you like to unmute? Thank you. Yeah, I, I was just um, the, the reference to local residents um, not feeling that they could um, make their objections. Um, I, I just wondered if you could 
are you saying that local residents feel um, too intimidated to uh, make a comment on this publicly? Very much so. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Alvey, do you have your hand raised? Um, my, my question really um, related to the comments that the area is saturated with um, sites already. I think it was to a certain extent answered um, later on in, in the statement, but um, I wonder if, if, if uh, he could um, clarify what he believes it, they, are, they are saturated by and how many sites there are in total. Um, I think according, according to recent figures, uh, between 60 and 70 percent uh, of gypsy sites are in the mid Cornwall China Clay community. Thank you. Um, Councillor Fitter, you have your hand raised. I do, Madam Chairman, and thank you very much indeed. Um, Mr. Parish Clark, sir, could you tell me, um, is the land itself got a registered use of any description? I noticed there's quite a bit of material being tipped on the site when the officer was showing us some site of plans or um, pictures of the site just now. I saw a vast array of materials had been dumped there. Uh, can you tell me, is it a licensed site of any description? No, sir. No, sir. So um, it's fair to say that the activities there, are, 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 you know, are not um, registered in any form. Not, not as far as I, I know, sir. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Would you like to unmute and Councillor Tudor and Fitter? If you finish, would you lower your hands, please? Yes. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. Chairman. Thank you. Good morning, Councillor uh, Mr. Stevens. Um, you, you mentioned in your talk about other sites owned by the applicant that are currently empty. I wondered if you could just elaborate on that, effort, or did I misunderstand what you were saying? Uh, no, it's it's not by the applicant. Um, there are other sites. Um, obviously, um, the, the name Crocker is a, a popular name in in in, in the area. Um, one is, I think, a cousin of uh, Mr. Paul Crocker. So, how far away are these alternative sites from Riscorder? Uh, within the two mile radius. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Jewell. Would you like to unmute? Yes, I think that my question has been answered by Councillor Kenny. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Vice Chair, would you like to confirm that there are no further questions? I can confirm that, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Jewell, if you could lower your hand, please. Thank you. Uh, oh, we, and thank you very much, Mr. Stevens, for attending. Yes, my apologies for uh, uh, Councillor Roberts' um, IT technology. Uh, yeah. Better than my councillor sometimes. We understand. It's not the easiest process. <laughs> uh, right, we move on now to the divisional member, who is, of course, Councillor Luke. Um, Councillor Luke, you have five minutes when you'll be asked uh, to sum up, please, starting now. Thank you. Uh, good morning, councillors. Um, I wish to strongly object to this application. The planning portal shows there are no letters of support in any way, shape or form. And in fact, most of the village feel um, uh, unable to, uh, shall I say, object to this due to other circumstances. I'll leave it at that. My objections are summarised by the committee report and I would like to repeat them quickly. The development would be intrusion into open countryside and it would certainly be out of character with the settlement of Riscola. Local people also have concerns about increased traffic and the impact of the parish footpath. The day rooms are large and much bigger than suggested in Cornwall, uh, Cornwall, Council, uh, Cornwall Council's guidance. Uh, the size of the day rooms also make the actual plots larger. This both increases the loss of greenfield land and increased adversarial visual effect on the complex. The case officers agree that there is an adverse, adverse in visual impact. I hope the members will also look closer, closely at these issues today. In addition, I would also like to make some further comments about Cornwall Council's approach to the provision of gypsy and traveller pictures. It is obvious to councillors in the clay area 
that the study came up with the target of the local plan was very flawed and the findings were simply completely and utterly wrong. The target is exaggerated, for example, the study states that the greatest need is in the western third of Cornwall, where we are told the need was 190 units by 2030. I think we have only had uh, applications for a handful of units. Half a dozen pitches have also been agreed in the west of Cornwall and three refused. I'm pleased to that our concerns about the target have been acknowledged by senior officers in the council and we've been promised that a fresh needs assessment will be carried out in the very near future. I've also looked at the related issues such as non-compliance with their occupation conditions on existing sites in the local area. It is important that I share the figures with you. Between 2006 and 2015, about 140 Gypsy and Traveller pictures were given planned permission across Cornwall. Of these, 85 were in China Clay area or the adjust, adjacent Luxillian and St Blasey areas. That equates to over 60 to 70% of all pitches in Cornwall being granted in clay country. Since the local plan was agreed, a further 62 Gypsy and Traveller pitches have been given plan permission. Of these, 50 were located in the China Clay area, Luxillian and St Blasey. That equates to 80% of Traveller pitches for the whole of Cornwall over the last five years. For, you know, and don't forget our area consists of only one twelfth of the area of Cornwall. Mid Cornwall, we're also giving out planning permission for pitches quicker than set out in the flawed study that I've already mentioned. I would argue that that should we not grant this permission for this application today because there are no vacant plots in, in the immediate area. There are 10 pitches at Bowling Green, which is less than half a mile away. The plan permission has been there for three years. The site remains empty. The other site is at Halays Road in Penwithick which is owned by the Crocker family and is specifically given plan and permission for use of the Crocker family only. They are closely related to applicants of this um, pitch today and there are 28 pitches there and the site is no, by no means full. So when it says that in um, 2A11 of planning that there is a local need, I'm sorry to say there is no local need. There are more empty pitches within a mile and a half a mile of this site. Therefore, I cannot see any given reason to say there is a need for local pitches. Throughout Cornwall, there may well be a need, and I do not argue with that, but locally, there is no need. Simple as that. Um, they are, you know, there are 10 or 15 pitches within a mile and a half a mile of this site. Therefore, I do not possibly see how we can, they, the applicants can suggest there is a local need in the area. I'm quite happy to answer any other questions um, if you have any. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Luke. Are there any questions for Councillor Luke, please? Thank you. The first hand raised is Councillor Mike Thomas. Would you like to unmute, please, Councillor Thomas? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councillor Luke, uh, for your presentation. Um, would you not say that an improvement to that site would make it a planning gain for the community rather than the way it looks now, so that if uh, it was built according to the plans, it would look visually more attractive than it currently looks? All I Hello, we appear to have lost Councillor Luke. Uh, yeah, looks looks like you're muted, Councillor Luke. Yeah, Luke has muted for some reason. I don't know how that happened. Okay. Um, at the moment, the site is being used as a business, um, which I might add has no planning permission uh, <laughs> at all. Um, and I know I don't agree with that. I mean, unfortunately, um, this is what happened. They move in, they, they start doing things like this and then then apply for planning permission afterwards. The same as, as this other sites throughout Cornwall. So I, I, no, I, I don't think 
it would make any difference uh, whether we gave it planning permission or not. It would still be as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman, I've got councillors Tudor, Fitter, Jewell and Simmons. Do you agree with that? Yes, Chairman, I agree. Thank you. Councillor Tudor, would you like to unmute, please? Um, thanks, Councillor um, Luke. Uh, Luke, I got I got two questions really. The, the first one is so that the public footpath that runs through the site is it possible to use it at the moment for the way that the the, the site's being used? It is, but I I think um, local residents have been fearful because the site is being used with um, heavy traffic of a, a um, tarmac lorry. As you saw in the pictures, the tarmac lorries and vehicles coming in and out of the site, crossing over the footpath and, you, you know, actually using the, 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 the footpath as an entrance in and out of the site. Um, and I think that it, it's um, made a lot of local residents fearful of be, um, using the footpath because of the heavy transport that's coming in and out of the site. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to ask, um, has anybody given you an explanation as to why there are the empty pitches um, nearby are not taken up? Can I be honest and give you an honest answer? Well, I hope so. <laughs> OK. The standard plan for gypsy and traveller sites in our area has been they apply for gypsy and traveller uh, sites. Uh, uh, Councillor Luke, be careful, please. Uh, yeah. I, I, um, I, I'm not, not happy with this room. Um, OK, uh, let, 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 um, let's just say the, the site at um, uh, uh, Bowling Green with the 10 sites in it hasn't, for whatever reason, uh, the plan pushing was given three years ago. The sites are available and nobody's taken them up. There's a perfectly good site. There is nothing wrong with it in any way, shape or form. Um, but the plan and permission is given and nobody's taken up the sites. Uh, the site at Halay's in, in Penwithick is a, is a Crocker family site and there are available pictures there. Why they haven't been thank, used. Thank you. I think I think that yeah. answers the question. Yeah. Thank thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fitter, would you like to unmute, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Councillor Luke, um, you, you, the site itself is used for the storage of the lorry and the various pieces of kit that goes with it. Can you tell me, in actual fact, um, how long has the dumping of materials been taking place on the site? Um, that's that's been going on for some time. Yes. Okay. And you you confirm it is not a licensed site for for the dumping of materials. Not as far as we're aware. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. Would you like to unmute? And Councillor Tudor um, and Fitter, would you like to lower your? Oh, you have Councillor Fitter. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Simmons, would you like to unmute? Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, Matt. Um, Hi, John. I I see. In the photos, uh, you virtually half answered my question about a licensed site. But if if permission was granted today for the, where would that site move to? Because it, would it be big enough to to accommodate the uh, the, the the new application and his work site? Um, probably not. Um, or or they might only put half the application in and continue to use the site for their business um that would i, I can't really answer that but the uh, the family do own uh, a lot of land in the surrounding area um on different sites so they could move to any one of those or they could stay where they are yeah Okay, thank you. But you, you did have answer it by saying, well, you know, it's, 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 it's licensed. So. Yeah, it's difficult to answer as in what they may or may not do. They may con they might continue to try and run the, the sure. business from the site. Um, they might move elsewhere. I, I, I obviously can't okay, say. Thank, thank right, you. Thank I think you. I think that's answered. Uh, Councillor Batters, you're next. Would you like to unmute, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it's reference um, a question you may be able to help me with. I'm sure the agent, Chris Montague, stated that this application was for uh, the applicant's two sons. 
can you explain in more detail, just to clarify, it, the application is for two gypsy pitches with associated works, including two mobile homes, two touring homes. Now, if I'm correct in what I heard the agent, Mr. Montague, state, it was for solely for two sons, would this be for their sole use? Or just to clarify the situation, with regards to touring homes, etc., would this mean that other uh, travellers could use that facility as well as the two sons being established there, please? Yes. Yes, in what respect? Yes, you're saying outside travellers could reside there as well when passing or what have you? Uh, uh, yes, because the touring cavern, and as, as in um, the gypsy traveller status, means that uh, the touring caverns as they tour around so they could move from one site to the other uh, um, and so forth so uh, the touring caravans are generally stored there but other people can come and go as in as is as in the uh, supposedly the, the lifestyle of, of gypsy travelers yes fine if I may chair just a quick one yeah. so might I therefore also clarify that the probability is that the mobile homes would be used by the sons, if I'm correct on that uh, on that particular point. But the touring homes could be used by anybody. Yes, as a yes. Thank you, Chair. Or other, other members of the family. Yes. Thank, thank you, Councillor Williams. You're next. Would you like to unmute, please? Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, my question is: um, You say. Councillor Luke, this site has been used illegally. Have have you ever, or had there ever been a enforcement challenge on the site uh, while it's being used for the purpose it is at the moment? Thank you. As far as I know, um, well, there hasn't been a challenge as yet due to uh, local, due to um, the COVID thing at the moment. Um, I, I think environmental and planning are having have got a lot of issues with backlogs. So I think it has been reported as far as we're aware, and it's somewhere within the system. Um, but as we all know, um, planning enforcement are, are very, very busy. Can I come back, Madam Chairman? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you say it's been uh, used for quite a number of years. Um, I know we're in a position where we are at the moment, but uh, there's been no challenge prior to that. Thank you. Well, they've owned the site for quite a number of years, and they've obviously been pe um, 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 what's the right word? Not, I wouldn't say dumping materials there, but but you know they've been trying to expand the site, so materials have been dropped there. Which you know anyone that has their own land is is able to do that to level out land and so forth. Um, but as you can see. The, the the you know the 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 vehicles and, and equipment uh, have not been there quite so long because they've you know now it's now got to the stage where they've been able to park um, vehicles and stuff with, within the last 12 months as they've expanded the site out shall we say thank thank you that answered my question okay thank you um councillor batters could you lower your hands please unless you've got another question and Councillor Williams, lower your hand, please. Um, Vice Chairman, can you confirm there are no further questions? Yes, Chairman, I can confirm. Thank you. Well, then, thank you very much, Councillor Luke. Uh, now, um, Emma, we do have another councillor wishing to come in on this on the telephone, but shall we do that at the point that the committee discuss, or do you want uh, that before I, the I would do it, do it now, Chairman. Right, thank you. We had a request from uh, another councillor, Councillor Flashman, um, to speak on this issue. Uh, if you could make it as concise as possible, um, uh, can you confirm, Emma, that we do not time Mr Flashman? I, I won't be officially timing him, but I'll, I'll, I'll make a note. Thank you very much. Um, are you there, Councillor Flashman? I'm hoping I'm not muted, but I may be. No, you're not muted. If you'd like to uh, um, okay. say what you wish um, to at this point. Yeah, my name is Jim Flashman. I'm a Cornwall councillor for Kelly Bray, St. Million and St. Dominic. Um, 
since 2002, I've been attending the uh, Gypsy and Traveller Liaison Committee meetings with Phil Eaton, um, an officer from Cornwall Council, and I've been attending them on behalf of Cornwall Council in my division. Um, I've written a little piece out which has been emailed to the chairman. As a member of the Gypsy and Traveller Liaison Committee since 2002, and in working with contact with Brian Hammond, Chairman of the Shogun Guild for the South West, I have learned a lot about the Cornish history and the rights of the travelling community. Most of these historic families and their work date back to the Roman times, hence Romany Gypsies. They have grandfather rights, and most of them have inherited land that they now wish to utilise, obviously with the um, families getting bigger. I believe it is important, oh, sorry, I believe it is immoral for anyone to suggest that there are too many um, particular area as it is at a kitten to suggest that there are too many Cornish families needing spaces in which to live. A huge part of the indigenous Cornish people have some um, marital or blood relatives in the traveller and gypsy community. We hope uh, as representatives of that community, we can strengthen the need for these gypsy families and, some, and support them in what is by human nature a biased or narrow-minded opinion of these people. These families have made up social numbers, uh, church congregations alike, as well as support of local communities in terms of sport, recreation, utilising local shops and businesses. I myself have seen them playing football, rugby, tug of war, running, cycling, equestrian, darts, skittles, choirs, and their families, of course, are buried in our beloved Cornwall. It is wrong for us to suggest that they can labour with tarmac, groundwork, scrap, coal, tree surgery, refuse collection, erect farm buildings that is possible at a possibly reduced rate, but then not live in our communities. They wish. Thank you very much for listening to me. If anyone's got any questions, I'm quite prepared to answer them. Uh, no, we don't. We don't um, yes, yes, Chairman. One, Councillor Tudor. Uh, just a minute, let me confirm. Oh, I'm not sure. Is it allowed for Councillor Flashman to ask questions, please? My question to the legal officer. Uh, this would be a question for um, Democratic Services, Emma Cade. Thank you, Chair. Um, you, you, can ask, you asked questions of the division member, so it would be questions based on what he's actually said. Thank you. Uh, on, on, uh, right. Count, <laughs> Councillor Tudor has indicated she wishes yeah. to ask a question, but it must be based on what he's actually said. Thank you. Would you like to unmute Councillor Tudor and, and um, hopefully be concise? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flashman, for making that wider point to us. I wondered, though, within that point, if you if that was relevant to the applicant and his family in this case. Well, I believe that every family has the reasons to live on their own land. And possibly if there is a family breakdown, it's very difficult to live in a site where they will be ostracised by their own relatives. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, we move on then, please. Um, to... just, just, just two minutes before I finish. Right. Um, Councillor Luke and myself are both on Cornwall Council's Countryside Access Team. And I notice here it says, no objections to the proposal. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, for letting me speak. Thank, Thank you, you for attending, Councillor Flashman. Right, we move on to questions of the planning officer. Uh, Councillor Tudor, you've still got your hand raised. Um, I don't. So we, we start with Councillor Mike Thomas. Councillor Chair, Thomas. Chairman. Yes. Chairman. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, on a matter of procedure, I could persons wishing to ask a question, raise their hands as they are doing, but keep them raised until their question has been put. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I hadn't noticed that one, uh, Councillor Greenslate, thanks. 
Now, uh, Councillor Green said I've got councillors Thomas Batters, Jewel, Kenny and Fitter. Green? Confirmed. Thank you. Councillor Mike Thomas, please unmute. Uh, uh, thanks very much, Madam Chair. This <laughs> is just a general question to the planning officers. If we could have some clarity on the field, what actually is the field being used for? Because the, the paperwork just says a field. Uh, is that what it should be? And clearly, we saw evidence that it isn't just simply an empty field. Could they give some opinion about uh, its present use and whether that uh, has any bearing on the application? Um, thank you. The application field has not been subject to any planning permission to change it from agricultural. Um, so that's how we've assessed it as an agricultural field, because what it's been used for at the moment, it's not permitted through the planning permission. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Batters, unmute, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is for Michelle, the case officer. Michelle, um, the agent did mention, as I said earlier, that this application was for the benefit of his two sons. Um, I don't think, I may have been wrong, but I don't think this came into your presentation. Can you confirm if you do know this point or not, please? Is it for the application for two sons? Was it in the application for you? Thank you. Um, the, during the, um, the processing of the application, it was confirmed by the um, agent that it was used for the two sons of the applicant. Um, and just going back to clarify something that Councillor Luke said regarding the touring caravans on the site. Um, it is standard um, provision for, for a touring pitch to also have a touring caravan. So if the occupants of that pitch wish to go off traveling, they use their touring caravan. Um, so it doesn't necessarily, it'll be open to any other people and obviously if members wish we could condition it to the two sons if if that gave them um more control over the pitch so that's something to consider fine so just just for my clarification the touring caravans in actual fact would be caravans associated with the two sons hopefully yeah so the standard provision for one pitch is normally a mobile home, a day room and then a touring caravan and that's um noted in the um the council's Cornwall and, tra and Traveller strategy that that is normally what a, a standard um, gypsy pitch is made up of. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Jewell, would you like to unmute? Yes, Michelle. Um, yeah, a question that Chris said, could actually people live in those touring caravans or are they just there as storage for when they go off? That's my first question. And the second question, Councillor Luke said in his statement that there was vacant sites. Is, was that taken into consideration in regards to your recommendation? Because if there's empty sites, there's no reason why these members family could go on those sites. I just, could you answer those two points, please? Okay, firstly regarding the use of, of um, the pictures, as far as I'm aware, the touring caravans are there um, if they wish to travel um, and the day rooms are there for washing facilities, etc. Um, with regards to whether there's any vacant pictures around, we're, we don't currently have that information from a monitoring perspective um, and also our policy, policy 11, doesn't doesn't raise the issue of any empty pitches so we don't have the information regarding empty pitches and in policy 11 it's not a consideration okay so just going back could you clarify that those the people live in the static caravan they use the day room so those touring caravans they are they are not occupied at all they're just parked there for when they go off traveling is that correct to, to be honest, I can't categorically answer that. What I can say is it's in line with um, what Box, is meant. Yeah. What um, no, what what we've noted as a traditional gypsy pitch in the council's gypsy and traveller community strategy, and um, I'm as far as I'm aware, they're there for touring purposes. But I couldn't categorically say that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kenny. Would you like to unmute, please? Thank you, Chair. I'm looking at condition eight on page 27. Um, you quote, um, based on identified and quantifiable need. So 
I'm surprised you're saying it doesn't matter if there are sites nearby because surely those would contribute to the identify and quantifiable need. All I can say is the need it was what was noted in policy 2A, which is the strategy of how many pitches we we want to deliver. And all I can say at the moment is we haven't got an up to date needs assessment or um, of which pitches are empty and which aren't, unfortunately. But shouldn't we have that before we come to a decision? Because it doesn't, it, it's very difficult when you have claim and counter claim um, as to whether there actually is a need for this particular site. So from a policy point of view at the moment, the need is that we've got uh, an outstanding requirement of 256 pitches. That's the evidence that I that we have in the policy status. I don't know if Gavin wants to add any more to that, but that's all I can add at this point. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. If I can, Councillor Kenny, help Michelle with that answer. So our policy doesn't require us to distribute new gypsy or travel sites throughout the county. Our policy says that we need to meet and identify a target by 2030. And at the moment, we're 256 pitches short. And just for your benefit and other members, um, I sympathise with the comments that have been made insofar that we do have evidence to suggest that more gypsy travel accommodation sites have been erected in mid core more than elsewhere. Um, but that's that's what's been submitted and we need to submit it. We need to assess that in accordance with the policy in front of us. We tested this a little bit a couple of years ago um, by refusing an application in mid Cornwall, saying, which I think your concerns might be, Councillor Kenny, that there seems to be a lot of pictures in mid Cornwall. And the inspector gave us a clear stare then saying that that may be the case, that the policy requirement in the Cornwall local plan is, is X, which at the moment is what we said before, which is 256 pitches. There's no requirement to, to, boot, to mix those throughout the county. So that inspector made it very clear to us that to remove any doubt that the wording in the, in the local plan is that there's a target that we need to meet. And so I understand also what questions have been raised about potentially other sites being vacant, but it's a high number. The number that we're, we're requiring again is the 256. So that's a lot. So I urge you to take that into account when you make this decision. Thanks, Chairman. So there's a there's a problem with the policy and we have to follow the policy because it seems clear that the policy doesn't cover this sort of issue, but we'd have to follow the policy. Um, the, the point about it's only going to be family members, um, unless that's a condition, that's irrelevant. So if it was, if we are saying, and if the applicant is happy to have it conditioned to only the family members, I would be happy to put that condition in if that were possible. It makes me nervous doing that in all honesty and so far the, of, of the nature of the accommodation that, that's for, for travelling people. Mm. So um, the, 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 the mention of it's only going to be for two sons is irrelevant because it could be anybody. It, it's, a, it's only relevant in so far that that's been submitted and so that's how we've looked yes, at if the... It's not, if it's not conditioned then it's irrelevant. That's we've all, right. we've yeah. all seen no, yeah. promises that don't get fulfilled. Yeah. Come, 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 come Thank you. you as concise as possible, oh, please. Sorry, this. I have um, shared my mistake. Thank, thank you. Uh, right, Councillor Fitter, would you like to unmute? Councillor Jewell, would you like to lower your hand, please? And Councillor Kenny. Yes, thank, you. thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I've got two questions. One quick question to Gavin, because I'm intrigued about this 256 um, uh, pitches required by 2030. Um, can you tell me that about how, how we is, how we how have we established this number? Is it people just record rather like home choice? You record the need for a gypsy and traveller site. Uh, thanks, Councillor. But to the um, we we as a planning team establish it by by examining our the Cornwall Council annual monitoring report. And in 2019, that stated that we delivered 44 pitches since the adoption of the plan which leaves a short call of a further 274. Um, since December 2019, sorry, we've approved another 18, with many a total of 62, and that's how we've given you the number. So our monitoring t um, colleagues gather that information and pass it to us. Yeah, just as an aside, because um, I was intrigued, because if we've got sort of 
256 sort of families waiting. I can't understand really how we've got these two sites in this locality, which seemingly have sort of bags of vacant sites on them. So it's, I'm, I'm just don't quite get my hand around that. But anyway, not to worry, thank you very much. But my question to Michelle is, I'm intrigued that the ecology survey was undertaken on the 15th of April, which of course was right in the middle of lockdown. Can you tell me who carried out this um, ecology survey? I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I can go on mute and have a look on my system and confirm it was it was undertaken by a qualified ecologist. Um, but I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I can have a look if you want me to have a look and then come back to you. But it it was a, a qualified ecologist. As long as it was a qualified ecologist, Councillor Fitter, you could deal with the other question out of outside of the meeting, couldn't you? Yes, I, I, I was just intrigued how we managed to do yeah. it because I thought all surveys were, were um, stopped in actual fact during lockdown. So I'm intrigued as to how we had a sort of an authentic survey for um, bats and birds, etc. and so forth. I understand your question. Um, is, is that the end of your questions, Councillor? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, it is. Thank you. Next, I've got Councillor Mary May. Can we lower hands, please? Councillor May, are you there? I am, loud and clear. Um, yeah, I think Councillor Fitter has answered one of my questions and it was really about a list, but I see Gavin has come in with the answer. However, I do remember us uh, when we were looking at one of the applications in Councillor Luke's division. Uh, we did ask for lists at that time, but I know Gavin is saying now that we don't need lists. Um, however, what I would like to ask is, uh, was there not a, a gypsy and uh, traveller liaison officer available this morning? Because I know, um, I think a Phil Ead has had a replacement, but wondered why they weren't representing this morning. Uh, my other question too is, um, localised level, localised um, harm, could we have an explanation about the localised? Do you do you mean, uh, Michelle, just around the hamlet there is harm? Um, and the other one is, I see in the notes that this application does not include business use on the site. So what is happening to the business use on the site as, it, as we've seen in the photos at the moment, if this application is granted? Thank you. Um, I'll go to the um, the landscape harm really. The reason I concluded it was localised was because um, it was mainly the views would be limited from within the um, public right of way um, because of the topography and the land levels the site falls away so it would be hard to be viewed from within the settlement unless you were walking down the public right of way so that that was why I concluded that it was localised localised harm. Um, sorry, I've forgotten your other question. Uh, about the business, where oh, will the existing business go? Because this application is not about a business. And the other one was, why haven't we had a gypsy and liaison officer here at our meeting today? OK, apologies for that. Um, with regard to the business use, like I said, um, the site isn't actually registered as a business use, so it is an unlawful use. Um, I'm not aware where, because of that, we're not aware where the new business would go, whether this is a business, but we don't know where any rubble or whatever stored on the site will go. So I can't really ask that, answer that question, but it's not reg registered as a business site. Um, and with regard the, to the gypsy strategy officer, I'd probably pass that one back to Gavin. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Um, I didn't even know that Phil Eaton had been replaced, Councillor. Um, it was a shame when he left, but in, in terms of the information in front of us today, I think we can be satisfied. Well, I know we can be satisfied that we can condition the occupants of this proposal to be for, for specifically for gypsy travellers people. And we've got a large need in the county that the other two things that we really need to be aware of. Um, I think Phil's role would have been 
probably in helping us define who is or isn't a gypsy when it comes to um, monitoring that condition. But in terms of making the decision itself, it's clear to me that what the policies say, there's a large need that hasn't been satisfied yet, and we can put a condition on the planning application that means that the occupiers will help to address that need. Thank you. Um, thank you. If I could just clarify then, so maybe uh, Councillor Jim Flashman spoke on behalf of the Gypsy and Travellers community because he probably knew a, a, an officer couldn't be present. Um, but just could I ask one more question, Chairman, with your indulgence, is what about relatives of the crockers? Are they, would they be allowed to come and visit? So if they were coming down like I've had in my area because they visit each other, um, would they be allowed to stay on this pitch or one of the pitches? Yeah, look, it's, it's for two families and there's so many permutations and combinations. I know you know how families live and I would imagine these this, these types of families are no different to other types of families. Um, so for sure there'll be people coming to visit, I would imagine. Um, and whether they stay or not, um, there's there's a limited amount of accommodation as there are of any planning unit. So it, it would be the same considerations with any planning unit with people coming to visit. Right. Yeah, but when but in our own homes, we have limited space, don't we? We have two bedrooms or one bedroom that we can allow, but they will have the day room, won't they? Just yes or no is fine. Yeah, they look, they've got a day room and they 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 use the day room for specific purposes. And, and you're probably thinking also they've got the touring caravan and that would be used for specific purposes. I think if we were to, to grant planning permission, we'd be putting the condition on it for two families. And so if and if more than two families were living there on a permanent basis, and I know you know that permanent is fact and degree, we'd need to investigate in the normal way. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Tudor, would you like to unmute, please? Thank you. Uh, my question was just about um, understanding about the, the need, um, given that there are vacant plots nearby. So we need to create 2,000, uh, 256 pitches. So am I, in theory then, um, those pitches could all be built in the same area? Or is there a point at which we say that an area is saturated? Yeah, I think in th uh, you're, you're on it there. I think your, your theory is in, in theory, the policy doesn't prevent a high concentration of this type of accommodation. But what policy 11 does say, it needs to be of an, of an appropriate size and proportion and scale to avoid dominating any nearby settled community. So we've, we've got an element of judgment there, but the actual objective number of need, there's no quantification on how that should be assessed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairman, can you confirm no other hands are raised, please? Yes, I can confirm, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much. Could I ask a question myself, please? Yes, of course. Uh, could I ask possibly Michelle or Gavin, what is the current status of this site within the red line as we see it at the moment there? Please. The current status is it doesn't have planning permission. So um, for the purposes of the consideration, it would be um, counted as countryside. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, Peter yeah. Williams, Chairman. Oh, right. Um, Councillor Williams, would you like to unmute, please? Yes, Madam um, Chairman. Um, if we were minded to support this application, uh, what control or would it be possible for the applicant to encroach into the uh, remainder part of the land? And if, it, if so, could that be conditioned that they can't do that? So if they use the site for uh, what they've applied for, um, they've also got a lot of equipment and uh, storage. Uh, that's my question. Thank you. They've only got, whilst I appreciate they have got other sites, this permission is only, um, is limited to the red site line. Um, and there is a condition 
um, which is regarding a landscape ecology ecological management plan where we're looking for um, planting along the western boundary to um, which would be down here to clearly delineate the site so they wouldn't have permission to go and use the blue land for this purpose of a of a traveler site uh, may I come back madam chairman yes well, ob obviously they haven't taken any notice of uh, of it at, at to date so uh, there's no uh, reason why they should take any notice of it in the future so i think we need to make it quite clear that if they own the rest of the land there they should be allowed to encroach in, into that and extend it any further thank you i think i can help the councillor we, we don't need a planning condition on to regulate that michelle is spot on we're only looking at the change of use for the area outlined in red but we could put an advice note to set out and make it quite clearly to the consent holder that that is in fact the case and should they wish to encroach onto the area outside the land out, outlined in red that they'll require further planning permission so so our intentions and the fact of the matter will be quite clear to them from the outset thank you uh, I thank, do, you. thank you i do have one more hand can i just say we've, we've now been an hour on this application and i'm not in debate yet um uh, one more question, Councillor Albee. Would you like to unmute? Um. Thank, thank you. And um, my, my question actually uh, links very much to what uh, Councillor Williams um, and um, Councillor Chair before uh, mentioned. I'm, I'm uncomfortable that um, without a proper boundary treatment to, um, to the um, the red marked area, that um, the the tarmacking business will end up. Ex extending into the rest of the field and we know that enforcement will do absolutely nothing about it. Um, can we insist on a condition that and I, I mentioned, I know you mentioned the planting to the west, that appro an appropriate boundary treatment um, is um, put in place around the red area prior to the rest of the development um, commencing because otherwise we just know what's going to happen and yeah otherwise i would not be comfortable supporting this um, condition, sorry condition eight we can accept um sorry condition 10 we can expand that so at the moment it reads no development shall be commenced until a landscape and ecological management plan addressing landscape etc etc and it says the issues which need to be addressed in the land shall include retention of existing hedgerows and trees location and type of new hedges and planting and it reads along the eastern boundary but i could put along the eastern and southern boundary of the site um so i could expand that condition to include i could do the north the eastern and the southern boundary um, it al already states that this one should be retained um, so I could expand the wording on condition 10 and that is a no um, devel development shall be can commence until those details have been um, agreed. Thank you. you is, that, is, that, is that agreed or agreed and in place because um, it's all very well them agreeing that they're going to plant a, uh, a boundary hedge but I uh, so, it, so I'd, I'd like to see that happen before anything else happens. Oh, so at the moment it's a standard condition. So it says that they, they need to be planted within the first planting season of the development being undertaken, and any 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 plants which die have to be replaced within the first five years. Um, but we have a um, we could do it prior to occupation of the units that those hedgerows need to be put in place. I'm just worried that they might get damaged by construction traffic if they're put in before the units go on the site. So it, it sh we could change it so they have to be implemented prior to occupation or the site being brought into use. That would have to be part of the proposal that moves forward a bit later, wouldn't it, Angela? Uh, sorry, Michelle. Yes, we could. If it's for amendment to condition 10 to be more prescriptive to make sure it includes all boundary treatments and undertaken prior to occupation of the site. Are you happy with that answer, Councillor Alvey? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, I think if, if we end up uh, going down in that direction, that's something that uh, I will suggest is who, whoever proposes includes that as uh, as an amendment to the conditions. Right. Thank you, councillors. Many of these questions could have been asked before taking this virtual meeting on. Uh, Councillor Kenny, your hands up. Would you like to unmute, please? Oh, hang on. Just picking up on the point of Councillor Alvey, I think the concern is not so much with the pitches and what's happening there, but there are things that are on the site at the moment. If it is developed as a gypsy pitch, what's going to happen to the things that are there at the moment? Are they going to move into the field? And I'm not sure we can actually, I'm asking Michelle here, is there a condition we can do so that, that the, the, whatever the contents is, that the, the surrounding field is not used as a a storage facility in the way that the land is at the moment. Um, I, Gavin may want to expand on this, but I guess it's a bit like Gavin said, and um, we can put an informative on because we're not granting consent for that blue land. And um, unfortunately, the use hasn't got consent on this red site anyway. So, I mean, like Gavin said previously, we can put a, an informative to make it clear that the blue site isn't included and any development encroaching into that blue line will require a planning uh, a planning consent. So we could definitely put an enforcement on. I don't know whether Gavin wants to um, extend on that point. Yeah, it's, Michelle's right. That's that's our limitations. We can only assess what's in front of us. But I do understand your concerns, Councillor, with what's going to happen to what's on the site at the moment. I think during construction, um, the, the developer, I should say, sorry, will be listening to this as well, Mr. Monty, and he'll be advising his clients about what they can or can't do. Um, you can store, of course, on agricultural land, provided that is an association with agricultural uses, a lot of farmers do. Um, I think we should make it, if, that, if you're minded to grant permission today, we should make it very clear on the permission with informatives what this permission relates to. And I accept your point that they could move it onto adjoining land and we'll make we'll make it clear in any decision notice by telling them that they need planning permission first to do that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williams, could you lower your hand, please, unless you've got another question. Um, Vice Chairman, can you confirm that all hands are lowered, please? Yes, I can, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, Gavin, before we move into debate, uh, um, I've got a sort of question, but also uh, a preliminary to the debate in that my advice um, before the meeting was that policy points here are around visual impact. That's, that's the subjectivity. But you've mentioned also that there is a question around dominance and saturation of a particular area. Um, and, uh, until it overwhelms the community. Is that also a policy point that the committee should be considering, please? I wonder if you could just expand a little back a bit on, on the subjectivity on this application before the committee go into debate, please. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I know I said it before and I'll stress it again. Um, the way we are with our wordings and policy in the Cornwall Local Plan, is that it doesn't require the assessment of need for any um, section of, of the county. It's county wide, so I can't stress that enough. We've tested it in the past and we've failed. I think if you were to go down that track, we'd run a real risk of appeal of not only losing, but also being subject to costs. It's just not there, the wording's not there. Yeah. Um, in terms of your second part of your question, Jackie, in policy 11, it does say that um, we support um, new gypsy travelers and traveling, traveling show people um, proposals when they are of appropriate size and proportionate in scale to and, and avoid dominating any nearby settled community. For me, that's, that's about the character of the area. Um, when I look at this planning application, it's um, next to a small settlement already. I'm not aware of any other um, gypsy or travellers accommodation next to that, and we think that's satisfied. But there is an element of subjectivity there. I, I, I would urge you not to bring in the wider Mid Cornwall debate into that, though. I'll just be looking at the nearby settlement. Thank you. Yeah. And, and sorry, Gavin, before you finish. Yeah. So, so to clarify, the subjectivity is around visual impact on the area 
and the point you've made about appropriate size on the very local area. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Right, thank you. Okay. Um, just before we move into debate, um, councillors, uh, there has been some discussion on limiting um, amount of time taken by councillors during debate uh, at IDIG because we need to be able to get more on the agenda. Now, that, that's being considered, but I'm asking you today if you would be concise, please. Please be concise during this debate. Uh, and with that, let's move into debate. So would those who wish to start that like to indicate, please? And um, first I've got Councillor Greensay, Vice Chairman, then Councillors Batters and Kenny. Councillor Greensay. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a question really for Gavin, Michelle, and perhaps legal. As we look at this application, it's in a red line as they always are, but I gather there is no permission to have anything on that site at present. So if this application was not placed and considered today, would the people occupying the site need a certificate of lawfulness? So I'm suggesting in my own mind that a full application would outweigh a possible certificate of lawfulness. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah, look, we don't know um, the details of what's on the site at the moment to conclude specifically what is or isn't permitted development. That'd be a separate investigation um, by our enforcement colleagues to establish that and the grounds of expediency of any further action would be needed part of that separate um, planning application. In terms of what we need to look at today is, is exactly what Michelle said before, is the use of this land um, for what's been proposed. In the event that you were minded to refuse planning application today, it could be then that an, an investigation would be on what the existing use is at present. But I just urge you to consider at the moment of what's been proposed um, on countryside land. I hope that helps. Can I come back, Chairman? Yeah, please do. Um, so from that, I understand that the full application that we're considering today would would cancel out all the uses that are at present taking place. Um, yeah, everything okay. there's so many combinations in that, Councillor. Let's say, so if they got permission today and implemented a half of it, for example, and left the other half on the site of whatever they're doing there at the moment, that could be subject to an investigation. So if they were minded to get permission today and they implemented it in full and bought in the two pitches, by my looking at it, it seems that there's no space for what's there at the moment. So that would remove the potential breach of planning control at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Batches, would you like to unmute, please? Thank you, Chair. I'll be as concise as possible. Having heard that there's over 250 uh, sites required for gypsy travellers in this county, this today would have been too, too reduced or reduced by two had this been passed. But what does concern me somewhat is there are no conditions being attached to this. So at this moment in time, I am not of a mind to uh, support approval, realising that there's no conditions whatsoever being attached to this site. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Batters. Councillor Kenny, would you like to unmute? Yes. I'm not sure I entirely agree with Councillor Batters there. There are conditions in the report. I'm very unhappy about this, but I think the technical term is stuffed. The policy is what it is. Uh, I'm certainly hoping I'm not going to be the one who has to propose support on it. So hopefully there'll be somebody else. But I don't see that we have any policy handles that we can actually hang on for rejection. Um, and I, I totally accept what uh, Gavin is saying about the advice note. Um, but as I said, I don't think we have anything that we can base a rejection on. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Uh, Councillor Pitter, you're next. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, 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 at this moment in time, I will not be supporting this application as set out. And the reason is, I don't think we have enough history of what's going on within the area of this settlement. 
And if there is all these vacant sites, and I understand what Gavin is saying, that, that our policy says they don't have to be restricted and spread around the county. But I am not convinced in actual fact that we have a need for 256 pitches if we have these other vacant pitches. So the information we have in front of us, I believe, is scarce. And I think we need more research. I would like to see this application deferred until such times as we've got more information regarding how many empty pitches there are indeed, not only in this area, but around the county as a whole and establish exactly what's going on. Because at the moment, we seem to have a very confusion picture. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, well, of course, deferral is an option um, that could, could be sought, Councillor Fitter. We'll, we'll bring Gavin in a little bit later if the debate leads us to that way. Uh, Councillor Tudor, you're next. Would you like to unmute, please? Um, thank you. Yeah, I totally agree with what um, Councillor Kenny just said. We are a bit stuffed, but I take on board what uh, the planning officers told us about appropriate size. Um, it's two two pitches this site, so that would seem an appropriate size. But what I'm minded is that we are creating a sprinkling of small um, pitches pitch sizes in one area, um, uh, you know, in, within a two mile radius. And I'm so I'm I'm minded. I'm I'm conscious of this sprinkling and how heavy a sprinkling is is too much, and that that's what I'm debating in my own mind at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Tudor. Councillor May, you're next, please, if you'd like to unmute. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm kind of going down the route of refuse, and it's in and around um, page 12, paragraph 3, but I would want some help there, uh, Gavin. Um, I have listened carefully and I have in the past, like a lot of you round the table or around the screen this morning, uh, gone into Councillor Luke's division and the, the site um, near the bowling green, I think all of you will have remembered when we met there on a rainy day and walked from one side of the, the field to the other, because I think there were so many in one part, so many in the other. Um, and it, it was passed, you know, and we had great hopes that that site would lead to uh, gypsies and travellers residing there. We were at that time informed by Council Luke that there was a site um, just at the rear of this site, um, and that was also had several pitches empty. So here we are again with an application three or four years on that again we're being told that, that sites are not being used. However, that shouldn't come in to today's argument, really. So what I'm asking for is a little help on paragraph three, taking out the size of the day rooms, because I think that will um, lessen the argument. But just um, I did note on what um, Gavin was saying with you, Chairman, about domination, however, the site will be recessed because it will be scaled down into um, the land. Um, but I do think where the harm is localised and weighs against the proposal, um, that is in the own, our own officer's words. So I'll stop at that point um, and see if Gavin can um, advise. I think before we go to Gavin, Councillor May, you've gotten to the heart of it, should the committee move towards refusal, paragraph three, um, if, if Gavin is going to help you, is I, are you preparing to make that a proposal? Yes, I am. Right. And I do need I do need a seconder at this point, as you know. Right. Well, let's see if we've got a seconder first, and then we'll go to Gavin for words. Um, uh, Councillor May is seeking help with wording for a proposal for refusal. Um, could you all lower your hands, first of all, please? I'll come back to debate. Uh, is there a seconder, please? And that's Councillor Alvi, you were first. So we have a proposer and a seconder for refusal. Can I go back to Gavin now before I go on with debate uh, around wording, please? 
Thanks, Chairman. So just to be clear, you're you're minded at the moment with this proposal to refuse it on the impact on to the character of the countryside, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Paragraph okay. three, page twelve. Yeah, I've got it. If you are minded to go down that track of being listening to what you've been saying, I think this could be wordings that you could use. The application site is located within the countryside. The proposal introduces built residential development, retaining structures and hard standing standings, which is at odds to the prevailing character of the area and therefore would appear in Congress to its distinctive rural setting and harm the distinctive character and natural beauty of the surrounding countryside. The application is therefore contrary to policies 2, 12, 21 and 23 of our local plan in paragraph 170 of the MPPF. And can I thank Gavin at this stage, Chairman? Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. That's very helpful. Um, Councillor Alvey, are you happy to second that? And do you wish to speak at this point? Um, yeah, I am happy to second it. Um, I would just like to add and, and ask of Gavin and um, whether he thinks uh, he, he did sort of mention in it so almost a throwaway but uh, when um, answering earlier questions about um, whilst the um, the number target uh, is is a county-wide target um, there is provision to consider if um, it's likely to destabilize the numbers in a particular area um, that and he did mention that that was an area of subject um, subjectivity and I wonder if bearing in mind the number of sites within such a close proximity to this site whether or not that is also another reason to include uh, if if he doesn't agree that uh, it's it's worth mentioning then I'm quite happy to go with what we've got but uh, I just believe we need we need to be as uh, as robust as we can in this refusal. Thank you, Councillor Alvey. Gavin, would you like to come in on that one, please? Hello, Gavin. Sorry, can trouble for my muting. Thank you. I'd urge you not to go down that track. Um, we've tested it recently in the appeal I talked to you about previously, and um, it certainly didn't come out as a favourable. Um, way to travel. I think we went down that track, we'd be really looking at the sword at appeal stage of not only losing but also of costs. The wording clearly doesn't say that, so please don't do that, members. Thank you. That's really clear and good advice. Thank you, Gavin. Um, before I go on to the vote, I am going to see if further debate is needed. And Councillor Brown, you've got your hand raised. Would you like to unmute, please? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I have done. Um, I just want to. I, I I actually want to compliment the committee on the debate because I think it's been incredibly well well conducted. I think the committee have been very sensitive to the to the issues affecting the China clay area, and and I you know I ask everybody before you vote just to think back to what to what Councillor Luke said right at the beginning. Um, I just want to make a point um, because it's it. I think we're being given strong advice by officers not to sort of look at the distribution of sites and future sites across Cornwall. But I do think we're not a policy making committee. We're a committee who implements existing policy. But I do wonder whether we can either put in the minutes, the notes of the meeting today or you and your vice chair, who both represent St Austell and the Clay District, will take back to the IPDIG group the strong view of this committee that the policy does have to be reviewed quickly and what is the best mechanism to do that. Otherwise, we're going to continue to have awkward, difficult discussions on <coughs> similar applications like this for years to come. But I don't think that will be satisfactory for everybody. So I support the reasons for refusal, but I think we also have to learn from this application and try to help you and officers with a strategy for prioritising, giving us a better policy context um, quicker than than might be the case. Thank you. Councillor Brown, that's incredibly helpful. I would like that minuted. And just as a reminder, do you all remember that about two to three years ago, this committee asked 
that a check be made by the council that it was in fact gypsy and travellers inhabiting the gypsy and traveller site uh, in, the, in the area. Uh, and I think that that became, um, some, some might say diluted, some might say it was carried out. It, it became a, a sort of pursuance that Councillor Cole, I believe, is having with the council. But I think policy work is needed. Councillor Brown's right on that. And I'm very happy to take that back to IPDIG uh, if the committee would so wish me to do. Uh, and I will take silence as being confirmation of that. Um, I've got one more hand up and that's Councillor Fitter. Would you like to unmute Councillor Fitter? Apologise, Madam Chairman. I neglected to take it down. <laughs> right, thank you, Councillor Fisher. We all do that. Uh, right then, uh, I have a proposal for refusal. The wording being as Gavin read out, uh, which is relating to harm to character, policies 212, 21 and 23 and 170 paragraph of the NPPF, proposed by Councillor May, seconded by Councillor Alvey. Uh, Vice Chairman, are you trying to come in there? No. Uh, yes, Chairman, there are three hands raised at the moment. Yes, um, can, can, can I ask that you all lower your hands, please? Although the vote's going to be verbal, I believe. Councillor Fisher, can you lower your hand? Councillor May, can you lower your hands, please? Councillor Fitter, could you lower your hand, please? Well, I've pressed the button twice, Madam Chairman. And oh, this is, yes, it's gone. Yeah, it's Thank gone. you. All clear, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, so, proposal by Councillor May, seconded by Councillor Alvey, uh, wording as read out, and I've just given the summary of. Um, so, we're ready to go to the vote. So, I now need. Uh, which officer is going uh, to take councillor sorry chairman i'll be doing that so i'll be doing it via roll call so the motion is to refuse the application for the reasons read out by gavin so i'll go down through the names alphabetically so councillor alvey four councillor batters four refusal councillor brown councillor um, brown four refusal Councillor Bull. For refusal. Councillor Dyer. Against. Councillor Fitter. For refusal. Councillor Greenslade. For refusal. Councillor Jewell. For refusal. Councillor Kenny. Abstain. Councillor May. For refusal. Councillor Simmons. For refusal. Councillor John Thomas. For refusal. Councillor Mike Thomas. Abstention. Councillor Tudor. For refusal. Councillor Williams. Uh, refusal. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to refuse has been carried by 12 votes in favour with one against and two abstentions. Um, I don't think that was a, wasn't a, a, a vote against. Can we check Councillor Dyer's vote again? Councillor Dyer said he voted against. I did. Yeah, he did. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I'm going to call a, a comfort break. Um, According to my screen, it is 11.30. So uh, if I ask you to be back 10 to 12, everyone, is that OK? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Can we just remind everybody to mute before they leave and that the live stream will continue? Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Emma. Before you go, could I just ask if we have a parish council representative on the next one? Yes, you do, Chairman. You have Dawn Brown from St Agnes Parish Council speaking in objection. Thank you. 
Thank you. See you in a few minutes.
you know, it's us two again dancing <laughs> and eating again. Chairman, can I just remind you all the it's still being live streamed? Yes, thank you. <laughs> God almighty. How's your green house, Fred? Hello? How's your green house, Fred? You're still public, pals. Yeah, it's it's all public. The meeting Sorry. Producer. Can I remind members that this is still being live streamed? How are we doing with people back with us? What are you eating, Jackie? Emma, do we check that people are back? Please. Um, that Angela will be doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Time is such an essence in these meetings that I'm keen to start very quickly, you know, as soon as possible. Oh, it's Angela Saunders meeting producer. Do you want me to do a roll call? To check that you really Pro probably should, Angela, I think, yeah. yeah. Okay, Councillor Alvey. Here. Yeah. Councillor Batters. President Grant. Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown, not yet. Councillor Bull, you're here. I'm here. Yeah. Councillor Dyer. Yes. Councillor Fitter. Yes, correct. Councillor Greenslade. Present. Yeah. Councillor Jewell. Yep. I'm here. Councillor Kenny. Present. Councillor May. 
Present. Councillor Simons. Yes, here. For John Thomas. Yes, here. For Mike Thomas. Yes, present. Councillor Tudor. Present. For Williams. Present. Uh, we're just missing Councillor Brown at the moment. Held up in traffic, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep my eye on the um oh he looks like he's there now oh is he there that's everybody then right lovely then shall we move forward we'll restart the meeting Please agenda sure. item 4.2 PA 19 Trivaux Limited land opposite Goombell House Goombell St Agnes construction of four dwellings including two affordable the case officer is james mosley are you there james i am here thank you chair thank yes you. over to you then james okay thank you just sharing the screen hopefully everyone can see that yes yeah okay so this application the construction of four dwellings including two affordables uh, the key issues for this application, uh, the policy context for housing and the provision of affordable housing. On these matters, it is acknowledged that as per the report, previous housing development at the site has been refused. Uh, the difference in the policy context for this scheme is that there are now two affordable properties being proposed. The scheme is therefore being considered as a rural exception site under policy nine of the Cornwall local plan. In addition, in terms of the policy context, uh, besides the conditions that are recommended in the report for this application, it is also recommended that a further condition be imposed requiring the two open market properties that are proposed be principal residences only. Uh, this would be in accordance with policy five of the St Agnes neighbourhood plan. Uh, the further key issues then, uh, the design and landscape impacts, access and highway safety, any impacts to residential amenities, and ecology. So we've got a plan showing the application site here outlined in red. You can see just on the edge of Goom Bell, uh, south of St Agnes and scaled in. You can see the proposal site again outlined in red again just on the edge of Goom Bell there. And then an aerial view showing the same, the same site. Here's a proposed block plan. So we can see the two affordable units that are proposed are properties labelled one and two on this block plan. And they've got parking just in between the rear gardens there, um, just before you get to the properties three and four, which are going to be the open market units. Uh, a new footway is proposed just uh, inside the site, which is inside the uh, former railway bridge, uh, which marks the um, west boundary of the site. We'll see a picture of that shortly. Uh, here's access visibility plan. So the, the circle showing there, the visibility display is taken from a two meter setback position. This one. And access being a concern that's been brought to attention in this application. We also have some proposed sections here of uh, improvements that are proposed to this access point. Uh, some of the concerns have been in terms of visibility, particularly to the right upon emergence. And as a result of that, similar to the previous application uh, that was considered at this site, a raised uh, surface has been proposed within that access, which is proposed to um, increase the height of the expected eye line of drivers exiting the site. This is to enable visibility across uh, that boundary wall, which again we'll see a picture of shortly. Uh, we can see this raised space surface we can see in the section BB is intended to raise the ground level by approximately uh, 200 millimetres from the two metre setback position. Here's the plots one and two. These are to be the affordable units. So we can see a two bedroom unit and a three bedroom unit here. Plot one being the three bed unit. And these are going to be the affordable uh, units up for affordable rent which occupy the west hand side of the site. Plot three which will be the central on the block plan, three bed open market units and plot four which is the furthest unit to the east. 
Yeah, moving on to some pictures of the application site. This picture is taken looking towards the application site. So we can see the former railway bridge wall and we can see the uh, existing agricultural access, which is going to be the proposed access point to the site. We can see fairly central in this image. And this image is taken from west of the site on the opposite side of the junction. Got four more images now to get, get an idea of the, the context. Uh, in the top left is a closer up image and we can see the car park there in front of the former railway bridge. We can just see the proposed access point on the on the right hand side of the upper left image. Behind that bridge extends the site itself. We can see the trees kind of bordering the site boundaries on the opposite sides, the north and the east side of the site. Um, those boundaries can be seen uh, more clearly on the image at the top right hand side of this slide. So this is looking across the entirety of the site, just about see the agricultural land on the right hand side of that image and residential properties and land currently within Bell on the left hand side of that image on the top right. And both of the images on the bottom of this slide are taken from the field, agricultural field south of the application site, looking back across roughly the middle of the site itself. Moving on to some pictures showing the, these are taken from the proposed access point. The images on top are both taken standing from within the proposed access, looking to the right upon emergence. The image at the top left is taken from a one meter setback position with the image on the top right taken from a two meter setback position. The height these pictures are taken from is seeking to roughly replicate the expected eye line from, from a driver within a vehicle exiting this site. And images on the bottom are taken looking to the left upon emergence of the access. And we can see again, they're taken from a one and two meter setback position, looking at the bottom left and bottom right respectively. These pictures are now taken approaching this site. So this is taken uh, when approaching from, from the highway to the south of the site. And we can see the application site on the right hand side of this image. You can see the former railway bridge wall and, and, and the post there. You can just see that's where the, the access to the site is. And similarly, coming from the left, the opposite side, uh, looking at the left is the site on this image. We can see the former railway bridge wall again. And we can see the kissing gates on the left of this image here. Uh, the site is beyond that that wall to the left and just where the black car is the, the access to the site is just just in front of that in this image so the balance of considerations then uh, in principle this application is considered acceptable as a rural exception site with the difference to previous schemes being that the, this application now proposes two or four units as affordable rented properties is therefore uh, considered acceptable under policy nine of the Cornwall local plan. Um, it is considered appropriate in terms of the design and the visual impacts of this development and it is also an improvement comparative to the previous scheme in that visual respect. It is accepted that visibility upon emergence from the axis is constrained to a degree. However, it is not considered this impact is unacceptable to the point that it outweighs positive elements to the scheme. It has also been noted that the previous application at this site did not refuse permission on the basis of highway impacts. Taking all these points into account, the recommendation for this application is for approval with conditions. And as mentioned previously, those conditions are proposed also to include, in addition to what's set out in the report, a condition to confirm that the two uh, open market properties proposed should be confirmed to be principal residences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we do have a member of the public speaking in objection, Mr. Robert Wetherill. Do we have you with us, Mr. Wetherill? Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you for attending. Mr. Wetherill, you have three minutes and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Good morning, Chair, ladies and gentlemen. 
My name is Robert Weatherall and I have lived and worked not far from Boonbell Holt on Real Buxton Road for over 61 years. The six major highway safety issues, as I see them, are 1. The applicant does not control the land immediately south of the site and therefore has not and cannot provide any emerging visibility down the Real Buxton Road for exiting drivers. 2. The new access will effectively make this junction a five-arm junction and recent planning application in Campbell was partly refused due because the highway officer felt the site would be sited in close proximity to a multi-spurred junction. This was PA19-05168. Three, the access drawing is totally misleading and confusing. The wall height is 1.28 meter higher than the carriageway level. That's 119.74 subtract 118.457. And yet the highway officer refers to a 600 millimeter figure is necessary to sight children in the carriageway. The drawing shows an adult inside the wall clearly visible but does not consider the child who may be walking on the other side of the wall, i.e. where they currently walk to pass the site. Any vehicle turning into the site would not see a small child about to step out from behind the wall. The driver's eyeline height is 1.05 meter as shown, but when turning into the site, the 1.3 meter wall will need this. Four. Crucially, this site itself lacks any on-site turning should any vehicle enter the site, like a postman, delivery driver, or a friend visiting the property, resulting in dangerous reversing maneuvers onto the live carriageway with no visibility for the driver, putting pedestrians, cyclists, and passing motorists at grave risk. How can this be considered safe? Five. The officer's report states that the road is 20 miles per hour, but that restriction starts to the north of the site and does not include the access. Speeds are higher than 20 miles per hour and often higher than the posted 30 miles per hour. So I am amazed that the officer states that he expects speeds to be relatively low. He may expect the speeds to be low, but they certainly are not. It also states that there is at least 30 meters of visibility in each direction and yet there is no available emerging visibility at all down the Wheel Butson Road. Six, the NPPS in paragraph 109 advises that development should only be prevented on highways grounds if there would be an unacceptable Three impact minutes, on Chairman. highway safety. Thank you very much, Mr. It is Weatherall. abundantly clear have, that this is the I case. I have to stop you there, Mr. Weatherall. We're not, we're not allowed to go over the three minutes, sorry. Um, uh, okay, thank you for your time. But, Perhaps you'd be happy to answer any questions if there are those. Uh, are, yes. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Weatherall, please? Um, Councillor Kenny, would you like to unmute? Yes, hello, Mr. Weatherall. Um, no. Most of your, in fact, not all of them, are all to do with highways access. Is there, do you have any other problems apart from the highways? No, no, that's it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And uh, Vice Chair, if you could just confirm no other hands raised, please. Yes, uh, Chairman, none at the moment. Thank you very much. Then, Mr. Weatherall, we thank you for attending. Thank uh, you very much indeed. And, and we move on. We do have a parish council representative speaking in objection. That's Councillor Dawn Brown of St Agnes Parish Council. Are you there, Councillor Brown? Yes. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, we can, and you have three minutes, and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Thank you. When the original appeal for this site was dismissed, the inspector site, this site is not a, said this site is not appropriate location for development when assessed against local plan policies. It is only before you today as two affordable homes, the minimum, are now included to develop the refused site. It is disappointing that the affordable housing figures given are from August 2019, as since that time, more affordable homes have been completed and given planning permission as part of well over 100 in the parish since the commencement of the local plan. The Agnes Parish Council promotes affordable housing, 
In fact, it's currently supporting an application for up to 28 affordable homes. We would not be objecting to this application unless we had serious concerns about the safety of residents. The officers view that the impact on high boys would not be unacceptable under the NPPS is based on it not being mentioned in the original appeal, which was refused. However, at that time, the inspector's report could not cover the concerns raised by highways as the information highways had requested was never provided by the applicant for consideration. The intensification of vehicle movements mentioned will be significant from the very occasional tractor to multiple daily movements of probably eight vehicles as the residents will have little choice to use a car due to the challenging, partly unlit, unpaved, over one kilometre distance to any village facilities and the fact that it is no longer a bus as it was rerouted because it was stuck, stop it getting stuck on the congested way to the village. The issues with the ramp are not resolved and vehicles will exit the site at carriageway level, not ramp level. The visibility will be lost from the descent up to the front half of the car being already on the carriageway. There is no turning area within the site, so drivers will have to frequently reverse with limited visibility behind the parapet of the bridge supporting the highway and a field hedge with vehicles potentially coming from four different highway directions. Our people do not deserve to be told, you can have an affordable home, but it's over a kilometre from the nearest shop with no street lighting for the first 400 metres no footpath of 500 metres on a busy road with no bus. So you'll probably need to run two cars. And by the way, the residents that we died act are so dangerous. Seconds. The county council member who's so concerned, he insisted on challenge application at the county planning committee. We can do nothing to fight the existing poor infrastructure in the bad junction, but when planning for the future, we should not compromise standards away from well-designed and safe built environments with accessible service is as it is expedient for a current target. Thank you for your time. Chairman, you're on mute. Goodness me, I shouldn't need telling that, should I? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions, please? Councillor Kenny, is your hand up? Uh, yes, it is. Um, yes, I'm just looking at uh, the summary of St Agnes Paris Council objections on uh, point 17 on page 35. You've talked about the traffic and I think you covered the sustainability. Uh, it mentions substantial visual harm. What did you got in mind there? Um, I think that was from something earlier. I mean, this site um, is actually really well loved by the local community. When we did our NDP, we actually had put dots on things that are important to people, and this one was one of the one, one of those was actually sort of sitting back to the old railway in its setting against countryside and the interpretation of the railway that is not necessarily part of the rail of the mining heritage but the fact that it's disappeared is part of the change in the mining heritage and i think it was really very much felt that um this we were losing rather a lot of things that people actually cared about in the community so do you have a policy that in your plan that actually relates to this particular site um, it, 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 there is not a policy in naming this particular site, no. Um, but the, in the various supporting documents that were put forward when we did the NDP, this site was specifically mentioned by residents. Fine, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fitter, would you like to unmute, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Um, uh, the, the speaker, uh, if I could just ask Mrs. Brown, you, you said about the footpath and um, there is um, no public footpath for the first 500 metres. There's, there's no lighting between the site and um, the nearest lighting to, on the route to the village is 400 metres. The problem with the footpath is actually near the village. There's 500 metres where there's no footpath, there's park cars, there's cycles, 
buses when they used to run but don't anymore all have to compete on a narrow piece of carriageway could i just interrupt you why i say that is because on <coughs> page 45 of our agenda um paragraph 50 it says that a pedestrian footpaths are closed on the inside of the existing wall and will um, join up um, um, I am talking about the footpath, which is to be accessed to the village, the walking route, this, what should be a safe route to walk to the village. 500 metres of it isn't there. Um, this is historic, it's narrow roads, it can't be widened, it can't be added. So the walking route for children to school, people carrying shopping, with 500 metres with no footway on a comparatively busy congested road. It's not where you would plan a route to build. Okay, thank you and very much. Okay. Yes, thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Brown. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Kenny, your hand is still raised. Uh, is that could, right? Thank you. Vice Chairman, can you just confirm no further questions, please? Yes, uh, all clear, Chairman. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, Councillor Brown, for attending. Um, thank you for your time. We now move on to the agent for the application, and that's Julie Slater. Do we have Miss Slater with us? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Uh, you have three minutes, and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. I'm the planning manager at Enhanced Land and Planning. I'm speaking today in support of my client's application. The key benefits of the development relate to the provision of high quality, well-designed, affordable housing in a location where there is a high housing need. The site adjoins the settlement boundary on two sides. It is bordered by residential land to the north and east and a road to the west. It's an obvious candidate for an exceptions housing development in clear compliance with policy two of the St. Agnes Neighbourhood Development Plan and policy nine of the Cornwall Local Plan. Part three of policy three of the Cornwall Local Plan also supports the delivery of rural exception sites. The proposal has addressed the issues raised within the dismissed appeal and the previous planning application through the provision of affordable housing. As such, the policy considerations for the development differ from that of the previous submission. And the committee report is clear that the development complies with policy nine of the Cornwall Local Plan as a rural exception site. The application is being recalled before you today due to concern over highway safety. The key point to consider here is the fact that the appeal inspector did not raise access and highway safety as an issue in the dismissed appeal. This demonstrates that the previous access was acceptable for four dwellings. The previous reasons for refusal similarly did not reference highway safety. The current application addresses the previous reasons for refusal and the issues raised in the dismissed appeal. In going through the appeal process, any issues associated with the proposed development are assessed in detail. In the absence of concern over highway safety, the current submission can rightly be considered acceptable as it addresses the reasons for refusal and the inspector's comments. As the current application offers a clear improvement to the access, highway and pedestrian safety over that of the appeal proposal, a refusal of the development on highway safety grounds would be highly unlikely to be upheld as an appeal and would leave the council open to the risk of cost. The National Planning Policy Framework at paragraph 109 is clear that development should only be presented on highways grounds if there would be an unacceptable impact on highway safety or if the residual cumulative impact on the road network would be severe. As confirmed within the committee report, the impacts to highway safety are not considered unacceptable and the harm is not sufficient as to warrant a sustainable reason for refusal. The benefits of the proposal namely the provision of affordable housing in a parish with a clear housing need far outweigh highway concerns. All other aspects of the proposal are considered acceptable in policy. 30 compliance. seconds. In line with paragraph 11 of the NPPF, as the proposal accords with an up-to-date development plan, the application should be approved without delay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, other questions? Councillor Tudor, your hand is up. Would you like to unmute, please? Thank you. Yes. Um, hi. You, you, you've made um, you were sort of emphasising that the highway issues were not addressed. Um, any highway concerns in the um, original application? Yeah. But we've just heard the parish ward councillor tell us 
that that was because the planning officer was waiting for information and that um, there was yeah so um basically this is resubmitting essentially um so a previous a previously refused application and in resubmitting a previously refused application we kind of only need to consider the previous reasons for refusal and as it wasn't referenced as a reason for refusal um, nor was it raised at appeal as an issue um, and we kind of improved it over what was um, sort of the previous situation um, it's um, sort of not an issue that would be upheld as appeal Yes, yeah, thank you. That's okay. Okay, good luck, Councillor Tudor. Yes, uh, thank you. Now, Councillor Mike Thomas, would you like to unmute, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. This is the second time I've had the pleasure of uh, considering this because I was on West Subcommittee that considered this back in 2017, and I can confirm that so the issues of affordable housing were the main features. But my question to the to the uh, to the agent here is about uh, the the uh, planned pedestrian access or the, the, the not the access the pathway by the bridge. Will this be is it would be proposed for that to be built before the houses were occupied or during construction? Um, it can certainly be conditioned to be constructed prior to the occupation of the dwellings. Um, I'm sure that um, yeah, the case officer or Gavin will confirm that that's an acceptable approach, um, that the applicant would be very happy to accept that as a condition. Thank you. Question answered. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Vice Chairman, can you just confirm there are no, no further hands raised, please? Yes, I can confirm, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, um, Ms Slater, for attending. Well, thanks uh, very much. We, we now move on to the divisional member, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Mitchell, you'll be asked to sum up after five minutes, please. Thank, thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, th th this is quite a long standing application, and I certainly remember uh, Councillor Thomas does um, it being at West because I took it there. Um, it's not quite true to say that the highways wasn't discussed. It was discussed, the, the report wasn't complete, um, but it was discussed and the idea of a ramp um, was brought forward by the applicants. Um, and I've got to say, if my memory serves me right, perhaps the minutes will tell something different, was roundly dismissed. Uh, and no one could make any sense of what the ramp was supposed to do or what it was there for. Um, I've got some, uh, the, the history of this site goes back to as far as um, highways 2014. If I can just <clears throat> get a few bits that have said each time it's come up. 2014, the existing access has substandard visibility due to the existing wall. And I would advise that further consideration is given to vehicular access from the other end of the site. In 2016, the highways manager, development manager said, a general arrangement design of the proposed access should be provided detailing the achievable visibility displays at a point set back 2.4 metres from the edge of the carriageway. Please reconsult once the above points have been addressed. 2018, the plans detail the parapet wall as being 1.19 metres above the carriageway level. Whilst a ramp is proposed, this needs to finish at the carriageway level. Therefore, the front of the car would drop down when exiting the side. I therefore consider that exiting cars would not be able to see approaching vehicles resulting in a blind access. On the basis of the above, I object to the application as, as the site does not provide a safe or suitable access for vehicles. September 2019, previous application details the parapet wall as being 1.19 above the carriageway level. The visibility display emerging from the left extends over land not within the control of the applicant or highway. Parked vehicles to the southeast of the 30 mile an hour sign and dwelling adjacent to the staggered crossroads force vehicles heading northwest on the eastern side of the carriageway where the proposed access is located. I therefore consider that exiting cars would not be able to see approaching vehicles resulting in a blind access. On the basis of the above, I object to the application as the site does not provide a safe or suitable access for vehicles. The, the, the latest one is from May um, 2020. 
with the latest proposals and um, the highways officer sums up by saying visibility emerging to the left remains outside the ownership control of the applicant and therefore previous concerns have not been addressed basically what he's what he's talking about <coughs> is is land is the road to the left because opposite you probably see other pictures of there's a white so house on the corner there that um that house um is um they park outside the house so anything coming towards the bridge is on the wrong side of the road um i, I would say um going back to 2014 highways have had a problem with this ever since and i think it's a dangerous dangerous um access um and entrance um I, I presume the highway officer is with us, um, Madam Chairman. I did ask that he would be here so we could ask him questions or whatever. Um, thank you. Uh, have you finished your statement? No, no, I haven't. No, I'm sorry. Um, the strange ramp. Um, I, I've never really got my head around this. I've never seen anything like this where you would drive up on a ramp so you could look over a bridge and then immediately come down. I think it was originally 30 degrees, then it went to 20 degrees. I can't imagine, um, you'd have to be some driver to come down that ramp, braking all the time, and then looking left and right. Um, it's not something I've come, come up against in the, uh, so certainly as a member, Madam Chairman, I'm against this purely on highways grounds. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you very much. And, and there'll be an opportunity for questions to officers uh, in a little while. Thank you. Um, Members, are there any questions? I see Councillor Kenny's hands up. Councillor Kenny, would you like to unmute, please? I think you actually answered my question in your final sentence, but you don't have any problem with the, uh, the, 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 the place or the look of it or anything like that that was originally raised by the Parish Council. This is your argument is purely on highways grounds. Yes, Councillor Kenny, it is. Originally, we had problems with it. We've got to say that um, uh, the, the it's uh, they, they've now raised it as an exception site, um, which we have to say we do need affordable housing. But the the highways issues have never gone away, um, and as I say, date back six years now with these applications. I don't, no highways officer has been happy with this, and I I, I think to, to to go against highways. I mean, if we if we go against this, when do we ever listen to them? Because they they've been saying for long enough now that they think it's seriously dangerous. Um, so that, that, that I would certainly back that, but no, no, uh, Councillor Kenny, I bring this to you and to you guys purely on the highways issue. Thank you, thank you very much, Councillor Mike Thomas. Uh, like to unmute, please. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Mitchell. What's the, the data from uh, Cornwall Council Highways? Uh, regarding accidents and speeding on that stretch of road. Has, have there been assessments done recently? And, and by recent, I mean the last five years. Not to, not to my knowledge, Councillor Thomas. Um, there is, we get speeding everywhere in St Agnes and um, the cameras are always somewhere, but I don't, I don't think they've been on that. I guess the, the thing is people have got used to that junction, but to put another access in, like um, uh, Councillor Dawn Brown said, you're talking about five, five ways of getting onto that road in a very small space. So, uh, but that, no, I, I don't know of any, we, we can have some done if that helps. You might be able to ask that of the officer in a moment, Councillor Thomas. I will reserve that one for later. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor May, if you could unmute, please. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Councillor Mitchell back to the appeal because uh, we're told that highways wasn't raised um, in a particular kind of way that you're obviously telling, informing us this morning. So are, can you tell us a little bit how much more the inspector talked about the highways issue? I don't, I, thank you Councillor May for the question. I don't think at that time uh, it, it's strange because either side of that, uh, when we took it to a, to to, um, to the west, um, there were big um, problems with the highways. I think I think what probably outweighed that at the time, Councillor May, is is that the parish council were objecting heavily on the fact of it being outside the village envelope. Um, so highways, although they made a point and it was discussed, 
Um, I don't know if Councillor Thomas can remember any more than I can, but I can't seem to get the minutes. It was discussed. It wasn't what it was taken for. It wasn't taken for hours. It was taken because it was outside the village envelope. And most things um, were based around that. They did, however, um, as I say, if it's the 2018 one, they did say, I therefore consider the existing cars would not be able to see approaching vehicles, resulting in a blind access. On the basis of the above, I object to the application as a site does not provide a safe and suitable access for vehicles. It was discussed, and I remember it being discussed, because there was, there was some hilarity about the, the ramp, because nobody could quite work out how that would work. But I think there were, it, in some ways, um, I don't think the highways um, report was complete. And I, and I think when it went to Bristol, um, that they turned it down on other issues. I, if I could just come back, I, I see in a couple of paragraphs, children are mentioned. So do you have quite a few walkers, in particular children, in this area, accompanying their Thank parents? You, Thank you, Councillor Yes, it's a very popular area. I mean, it goes down to Wilbotson, very pretty um, little uh, hamlet with a few houses and a river. Um, we get a lot of cyclists down there, we get a lot of horses down there, and we certainly get a lot of people walking down there. It's, uh, it's a very favourite spot for people. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank um, you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mike Thomas, your hand is still raised. Is that uh, a new question? Um, no, but I'll think of one, but for the uh, brevity, I won't. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Councillor Mitchell, I've got a quick one. You've just said that the area is very popular with walkers, etc., to go to a pretty place. Uh, does that mean that these walkers are currently walking on a, an area with no footpaths? Yes, a lot of it, uh, Councillor Bolliam. There's, there's a little footpath um, by the bridge, which I understand they're going to try and redirect the other side. I'm not quite sure how that works, but that's what they're saying. No, it's mainly in the road, Councillor Bull. They, um, there are a lot of houses down there as well on the right hand side. Um, a lot of bungalows built some years ago. And you generally see people walking down there to go home. Right. Thank well. you. Thanks very much. Um, Thank you. And Vice Chair, if you can confirm no hands are raised, please. None raised, Chairman. Thank you very much. Then we move into questions of the planning officer. Uh, does anyone have any questions of the officer, please? Councillor Kenny, uh, you're first, if you would like to... Well, answer. it's not the officer, of course, it's the planning, it's the traffic uh, officer. Plan. Is, is there a representative here? Do we have a highway officer with us? Hello? Uh, yeah, it's Robin Watson, the highways officer here. Oh, okay, hi Robin, I've been looking at your comments online and two questions. One, there, apparently there was no um, comment from highways of, to the original appeal, the original application, and I was wondering why not. And secondly, I look at your comment and you say because uh, the, the land is owned by someone else, you can't do anything about the concerns to the to the left, but there are either concerns to the left or the not. Who owns it is absolutely irrelevant. So, are you saying that looking to the left is is uh, is unsafe? Uh, so, in in the first instance, uh, relating back to the application that went to appeal in 2016, I believe, um, I think it was more a case of we were still awaiting further information, which we never received, and then the application was. Uh, determined and taken to committee, where I believe the committee turned it down on reasons other than highways, um, which is probably why maybe the, the appeal inspector didn't necessarily include that as the reason. Um, in terms of your second point, uh, yeah, you're correct in stating the, there's no ownership of the visibility display emerging from the site to the left. Um, and because there's no ownership and it doesn't fall within highway, uh, there's no possible means to condition uh, a visibility display across it such that uh, the hedgeway would present an obstruction to, to emerging visibility. So are you saying it's unsafe? Uh, yeah, concerns remain on rest. So you're, um, so you're saying to the left, it's unsafe and there's nothing you can do about it. Because Correct. this whole, this whole uh, decision is going to be based on what the highways think. And you're saying that you think it's unsafe. Uh, yeah, the, the, the concerns uh, emerges to the left remain unaddressed. Um, however, I, I believe there is potentially a, a fallback position which, which might be able to be advised more by uh, either, either Gavin or, or the planning officer. 
um, relating back to the, the, the previous appeal. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. That was a really good question for the committee. Um, Councillor Tudor, you're next. If you could lower your hand, if you could unmute, please. Hello, yes, um, I mean, my question was uh, probably made to the planning officer and the highways officers is along the same lines as Councillor Kenny. I mean, apart from the apart from the obvious tiresome question that always wonder if this is the rural exception site, why aren't we looking at 100 percent affordable housing on it? Um, in line with policy nine, um, I'm quite familiar with this area and I do I do know that there's no safe footpath there, but we beat the agent has told us very clearly that because the highways issues were not um, raised as a concern or discussed um, in the original appeal, that we can't use that, that we that we, we can't say that that's a reason to refuse this. Is, is that right? Uh, if I come in. Can I come in on that, Chair? Yes, of course, please. Yeah, sorry, it's Matt Stevenson. It's, yes, thank it's you, Matt. Area, so um, I would need to comment on this. Um, the previous reason for refusals for the appeal um, decision didn't include access. If you were to refuse it on access today um, and it went to appeal, the inspector would have a look at any evidence presented um, to them um, and have a look at that. So it's incorrect what the agent advised you. They would look at that. It's a material consideration. Obviously, okay. what the impact is, is you're very hampered or the person doing that appeal on behalf of the LPA is hampered by the fact that it wasn't a reason for refusal previously. Mm -hmm. So even if the appeal was upheld, um, you'd be at quite some risk of cost for being unreasonable for not having raised it um, on the previous decision. Um, that's on the assumption that the access being proposed today is very similar to that being proposed before and also for the same quantum of units, which I believe is also the same, which is four units. Um, and obviously the amount of traffic coming in and out really doesn't make much difference if it's affordable um, led or not. <laughs> so so that's the advice. Um, you'd have to be obviously very clear as to why it's unacceptable from a highways point of view. Um, some of that might be to do with the um, degree of restriction of, of street turning area within the site. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, I'm not sure yes. what the plans originally showed, whether or not they showed turning within the site or not. This one seems to rely on some of the parking areas being free from parking um, for visitors or, or whoever might be delivering or attending the site to turn within. So there's no actual turning area as such. Um, so it is potentially a, a reason for refusal, um, but I'd caveat it with, with the advice I've just given. Yes, thank you. I did look at the, um, I was looking at the plans I was talking and I, I can't see how you could turn a vehicle there. So you'd either be reversing in or out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dyer, you're next. Uh, please, if you could unmute. Thanks, Councillor Dyer. Yes. I want to go back a little bit further and Carrick District Council, and I'm of the opinion it was carried forward in 2009 when Cornwall Council was formed, had passed a resolution to seek the preservation of the railway line in case anybody wanted to reinstate the track and reopen that railway branch line and uh, uh, Mr Mosley you talked about a bridge in fact the bridge was carrying the road um, the railway was in a significant cutting and Goombal Holt uh, you showed us the gates that would take us uh, to the footpath down to the platform. Um, does this application uh, have any impact on that former uh, railway track line, which as far as I know is under uh, a, a restriction saying no development should take place, which impedes 
the potential of reopening that track. Okay, it's correct that this um, application site is over the formal railway cutting of Goombell Holt, which has now been filled in. I, I accept that totally. Mm. There are sections of the track uh, all the way to Newquay that have been small sections filled in, but mm. that has been brought to a stop by the resolution that Cornwall Council adopted when it took over uh, from Carrick District Council, which had imposed the restriction. And if that is the case, because the railway was in a significant cutting at that point, and the bridge only carried the road, not a bridge mm. over the road. Um, and as far as I'm aware, that policy is still alive to this day. As far as I'm aware, there isn't anything in development plan policy which prevents this development on this site going ahead due to being on top of the former railway link. In relation to also preventing something which may happen on this area in future, I draw attention to houses that also exist to the east and west of this site, which are also directly over that same area of railway cutting. Yeah, I, I, I accept that in total, but two wrongs will never make one right, sir. And um, if the proposal, and there are people looking at this track um, of reinstatement to uh, ease traffic congestion, ease the furtherance, uh, then we shouldn't make it worse, uh, in my opinion, by allowing development. You'll be able to say that in debate in a moment, Councillor Dyer, but I think the question is answered, isn't it? Well, it's answered as far as the officer is yeah. concerned. I'm of the opinion that the officer needs to go into uh, the historical evidence that, in my opinion, Cornwall Council uh, oh. adopted when they succeeded Carrick District Council. Yeah. And I'm sure the officers heard that and uh, you can reinforce that in debate in a moment, Councillor Dyer. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mike Thomas, you're next, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. So it's back to the question that I raised earlier with uh, Councillor um, Mitchell, which is that about the data for accidents and uh, speeding tests that may have been done through their various devices. I have a, and my second question, which I'll come to after that, if, if I may. Thank you. Is the highway officer going to answer that one? Uh, yeah, the the most recent data that we have uh, dates from 2010, so quite a considerable uh, time period ago. Um, it, it shows the the actual sort of passing speeds uh, are in line with the speed limit, um, but obviously you need to take into consideration that was 10 years ago. Um, and there's no no personal injury accidents uh, or sort of vehicle collisions within um, a couple of hundred metres of the site. Okay, thank, thank you. In, in terms of the plan to come out onto the highway with a footpath, are you aware of a, a traffic order requiring a concealed um, entrance sign to be placed underneath the 30 sign, which is now uh, in place? I'm not aware of anything relating to that point. Um, however, I'd, I'd state that the footway that's been proposed is internal to the application site. Um, so we, we can condition it to, for it to remain as a, a through fare, um, but it wouldn't necessarily be become adopted highway. Um, okay. However, it would give people the opportunity to um, avoid having to walk across the road to then access the site. Would, would you agree that it's a concealed entrance though? Uh, as proposed and uh, as stated earlier, we do have concerns about the emerging visibility to the left. So in that sense, I think that point um, could, could be considered. So you would support then a concealed entrance sign. That's basically all I'm asking. If that was conditioned, if it was possible to condition. 
Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily suggest that that we support that, given that we're, we're still maintaining our, our concerns with visibility merging to the left. Um, that would probably go against our, uh, those concerns and, and perhaps be seen as, as us supporting it, whereas at, at present that's that's not the view that's been taken. Councillor Thomas thank is you. rejecting at the moment. Uh, right, thank you. Councillor Kenny, hopefully you're the last question. Yes. Yes, um, Mr Watson mentioned that there was alternative ad entrances being considered and I was expecting someone to explain that. Ha has there been alternatives or are there possible alternatives that they haven't yet reviewed? Uh, Councillor, that, that didn't come from myself. Um, that was mentioned by another speaker previous um, and I don't think any other accesses have been considered or, or demonstrate to highways um, in regards to this site. Oh, who did say that? Uh, one of the speakers said it, Councillor Kenny, but as you know better than I do, um, we have to look at the application in front of us which highways are objecting to. Hmm. Yes. Thanks. Thank I will have something to say when we get to debate. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Fitter. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'll be brief. Um, it's to the actual planning officer himself. I just need confirmation that the two affordables are indeed going to be rented and not going to be part bought. Uh, they are going to be affordable rented properties. Yeah. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Pete Mitchell, you have your hand up. Did you wish to ask a question? Yeah, you want the question, just for clarity, Madam Chairman, just um, going back to the 2016, when we took it to committee, I think I read from the 2018, um, the, 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 the report wasn't uh, finished. He said a general arrangement design of the proposed access should be provided detailing the achievable visibility displays. Please reconsult once the above points have been addressed. So it was more or less saying, we haven't addressed it, we'd like some more consultation. Just want to make that clear, Madam Chairman, thank you very much for that. Well, thank you. It's not quite the question, Councillor Mitchell, but it does add to what the Highway Officer is telling us, which is very clearly an objection. I, I uh, beg you, Paul. Right, thank you very much. Um, Vice Chairman, can you, uh, can you confirm no further hands are raised, please? There's only one hand, uh, Chairman, it's Councillor Mitchell, but other yeah. than that, all clear. Thank you. I think Councillor Mitchell's on his way. Thank you very much for lowering that hand. Uh, right, we now move into debate. Please, you've had some very clear advice. Who wishes to start, please? Councillor Kenny. Thank you. Well, it seems absolutely clear that the officer is still saying he's not happy with the visibility from the uh, from the left and there is no obvious solution. I was actually thinking of maybe we need to defer because I, I, I'm sure I picked up from somewhere that there, there might be an alternative solution. If this is entirely a traffic matter, can we not um, defer it and they can have a look at it and see if there is an alternative entrance that could be considered safe? Otherwise, I'd have no choice but to propose refusal. But it seems there could be something done that um, rather than propose refusal, if they could defer it, <coughs> see if there are any alternatives to this entrance. Well, that might be subject to a new application, Councillor Kenny, but that, that that's a question. Let, let's just go back to the planning officer. Matt, are you there, please? Yes, I am. Um, yeah, um, I mean, looking at the history of this, um, they've had four years to address the access. So I think it's very unlikely that any alternative really of any substance would come forward in the next couple of months. So I would suggest you uh, determine it on the basis of the access presented. They certainly, wouldn't case, see many, they would certainly wouldn't see many scope to me within the red boundary um, land ownership to do anything substantial. Um, in that case, I would that. I would propose refusal based on the concerns of the traffic officer uh, and noting that um, the reason it wasn't raised before was because they were, they were waiting for a response that didn't come. Yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor Kenny. I'll go back to the planning officer in a minute before we um, finalise any words. But um, thank you. So I have a proposal from Councillor Kenny. Could could I ask that but the, the two hands that are up go down just for a moment, please? Councillor Tom, yeah, thank you. Do I have a seconder for that, please? Councillor John Thomas. 
Councillor Thomas, would you like to speak at this point? Yes, yeah, very briefly, Madam Chairman. I concur with the Councillor Kenny's um, proposal. Um, yeah, if, if they've had time, like the officer said, that they come back with alternatives on this and they can't actually, there's no remediation um, scheme in, in, in place to uh, overcome the difficulty with the left visibility, then I see no other reason, Madam Chairman, than actually to accept that it should be refused. Um, and look at, look at, listen to the local parish councillor. Obviously, they know what they're talking about. Um, there are serious, serious issues in that location. So I'm happy to second um, Councillor Kenny's proposal for refusal. That's what she's saying. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Councillors Kenny and Thomas, I'll go back to the planning officer in a moment, but I will finish off uh, the debate just in case there are points made that might add to uh, any proposal. Um, Councillor Mike Thomas, you're next, please. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I can reconfirm that the main discussions last time were very much about the affordability and and the place in terms of the village envelope, as mentioned earlier. And the discussion, the discussion didn't really uh, address the highways issue because the main concern of the committee, as I recall, it was about the status of, afford of, of lack of affordability. But that being said, I am concerned that uh, if we don't give uh, a, a position, then judging by some officers, and I'm not really sure who is who here at the moment, uh, it has been made clear that it would, might be very difficult uh, to to go to a to to justify our position of appeal. So I'm I'm I, I, I feel that the, the the volume of of cars is so small, and uh, I take on um, the highways officer Robin Watson's viewpoint, but I I I, I cannot support a refusal at this stage personally. No, I understand, and that is your prerogative, Councillor Thomas, but at least we have very clear uh, advice from the highways officer, which is something we are often seeking. Um, Vice Chairman, <coughs> um, I'm going to take you next because your hand's been hovering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we saw a cross section of the ramp that was being proposed just a few moments ago, Chairman. And my question really to the planning officer is, uh, was this an attempt to increase the visibility to the left by raising the driver's eye line down the road? Um, if you'd like me to just come in on that, sorry, Chair. Yes, please, I, I would, even though we're in debate, but please sure. do, yes. Um, so the idea of the ramp was uh, added to the previous application, which was which was refused, and it's similarly being proposed again. The idea of the ramp is to provide a raised platform to enable improved visibility over uh, to the right upon emergence. Uh, it's visibly to the right, which is where the the railway wall is. I'm not sure if everyone can still see my screen. But yeah. It's the two pictures at the top. There is that. That's the reasoning for the ramp. Is to get this obstruction of the wall and the vertical plane, it was to increase our line there. The two images to the bottom here, these are the images taken to the left upon emergence, which is where the highway officer has suggested he's got concerns that haven't been overcome. It was in relation to that, these lower sides uh, shots there. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> now I've still got three hands raised. Um, Councillor John Thomas, I think possibly you haven't lowered your hand. Uh, Councillor Fitter, you're next, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, yeah, I, 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 I will not be supporting refusal. I, I believe that we've that previous application that was refused. If, if you know they didn't, they, I find it extraordinary that they didn't consider the highway's entrance, and it must have been because it wasn't prominently brought to their attention possibly but i believe there's a low volume of traffic coming out i've not i i find it difficult to accept your conclusion madam chairman that we've had firm and strong and positive advice from the highways officer i feel the highways officer is not really in actual fact um <laughs> totally saying it is totally unsuitable um he, he it says it gives him concerns etc and so forth so um 
I, I, I will be supporting the application as set out because if we go to an appeal, um, I think we're going to be in big trouble, quite frankly, because um, even if we win the um, uh, win the appeal, we'll lose on costs. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Fitter. Uh, that is, of course, your prerogative. Councillor Alvey, you're next, please. Thank you, Chair. I was um, also going to decide with uh, Councillor Fitter and Councillor Mike Thomas, uh, just having recently seen an appeal in, in my division whereby the highways officers had objected. Um, it was one of the reasons um, for the appeal. Um, the planning, it went to a appeal, planning inspector um, accepted the objection or the concerns of the highways officer, but because it was such a low volume of traffic uh, involved, um, it, the inspector sided with the applicant on that particular matter or that particular issue. So, you know, we, we shouldn't see the, the highways officer's concerns as a, as a black or white uh, reason for refusal. It, it is part of the balance and, and in this case I don't think the, the scales will uh, um, will support refusal on that on that um, matter alone and that does appear to be the only matter um, with, that we're discussing today. Totally understand what you're saying Councillor Alvey. It's just a bit of an irony that we're so often asking for highways to um, <laughs> to object to, to issues. Uh, right, Councillor Tudor, you're next, please. <clears throat> Thank you. It seems to me that there's been serious concerns expressed about the highway issue here since 2014 at least. I used to live just down the road from this spot. I'm very familiar with it. Go cycling along there quite a bit. Um, it is busy at certain times of day. Um, but to say there's any hardly any traffic there, it's a is, is misleading, I think. Um, we, uh, I take the point that we we're all, we hardly ever get highways objecting to something, and here we have a clear objection from highways, and we're not acting on it, which seems dangerous to me. And the highways officer did hint at a fallback position. Um, um, we don't know if we're acting on it yet. Councillor Tudor, yeah, I, yeah, I do have a yeah. proposal for refusal on the table, which I'm trying to get to. Um, yeah, I may well be acting on it. Thank you. Or we may not. Uh, right, um, Vice Chairman, you're next, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Just to be brief, I will not be supporting refusal. Oh, right. Okay, that is brief, Councillor Greenslade. I think it's all been said, Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Batters, you're next. Yes, again, Chair, it's all been said. I, I agree with what Councillor Fitter said earlier. I won't be supporting refusal either. No, right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we move towards the vote. Uh, oh, did um, Matt, Mr. Stevenson, do you want to come in again at all? Yeah, just very quickly, I won't take up too much time. Um, I'm not aware of any fallback position. I'm not sure what that, that's alluding to. Um, so I think you can dismiss that. Um, all I would say is, as Councillor Alvey um, has already mentioned, there is a balance of considerations here. Um, there is concerns about visibility in one direction being slightly substandard, and you have to balance that out um, with the policy support here for a rural exception scheme and a scheme that provides two affordable houses um, in a small scheme way, which does um, allow a smaller builder potentially to come along um, and deliver some affordable housing, which is needed in this area. So committee is able to make, you know, consider that balance uh, and make a decision on that basis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to go to the vote now. Uh, Councillor Tudor, your hand is still up. Is Did you mean it to be? No, thank you. Uh, I, <laughs> I have a, a proposal by Councillor Kenny, seconded by Councillor John Thomas, uh, for refusal along the lines of wording going along with the concerns of the highways officer. Um, can I go to this vote now, please? Uh, is the monitoring uh, the, the officer there? 
Thank you, Chen. Could I just clarify with uh, Matt Stevenson that he is content with that reason for refusal uh, and the wording of it? Yeah, sure. Um, would it help if I quickly ran through what potentially that reason for refusal would be, just for the sake of certainty in the minutes? I, I think it would, yeah. Okay, and just bear with your own. I'll, sorry, it's on a separate screen on Teams it was sent to me. Okay, so the, the application does not demonstrate that a safe and suitable means of access can be achieved to serve the site with insufficient visibility demonstrated, take into account the obstructions in the vertical plane and hedgerows outside of the applicant's control. The application is therefore contrary to policy 27 of the Cornwall Local Plan and, policy, and paragraph 108 of the National Planning Policy Framework 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Ready to go to the vote now. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that I have a motion to refuse based on the wording as read by Matt Stevenson, proposed by Councillor Kenny and seconded by Councillor John Thomas. I'll go through the roll call vote now. So, Councillor Alvey. Against. Councillor Batters. Against. Councillor Brown. Um, <clears throat> for the refusal. Councillor Ball. For the refusal. Councillor Dyer. Fuck's sake. Jesus. Can, can, can you switch your microphone off if you're going to use that? Councillor Dyer? Councillor Dyer, you're muted. Councillor Dyer, could you unmute? Advise me which way you'll be voting. Are you there, Councillor Dyer? Councillor Dyer? Oh. Councillor Dyer, you're muted. <laughs> Councillor Dyer, thank you, Councillor Dyer. Can you confirm which way you're voting for the proposal or against the proposal? I am for the proposal to refuse the application. Thank you, Councillor Dyer. Councillor Fitter? Against. Councillor Greenslade? Against. Councillor Jewell? For. For. Councillor Kenny? For. Councillor May? Against. Councillor Simmons? Against. Councillor John Thomas? For. Councillor Mike Thomas? Uh -oh. Hang on, just thinking the right words. Against. Thank you. Councillor Tudor. For refusal. Councillor Williams. Against. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to refuse has been lost by seven votes in favour and eight against. Thank you. Uh, then I'm looking for another proposal, please. Uh, Councillor, um, uh, Councillor Dyer's hands up, but I think it might be from, from the last vote. Can I ask, first of all, that you all lower your hands, please? Just for a moment, could you all lower your hands? And Councillor Mary May and Councillor Fitter, could you just lower your hands for a second? Thank you. All clear. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairman. Now I'm asking for another proposal, please. Ca Councillor John Thomas, you were first. Thank you, Madam Chairman. In that case, I think that it has been muted. I don't know, boy, that there is an alternative to this scheme and maybe produce a safer access if that's what the eye reasons uh, officer is saying so i think i think joanne has mentioned it or Councillor kenny um so i'll propose we go for deferment and this time get the information back that was required madam chairman um uh, right before i even get a seconder on that councillor thomas um thank you uh, i'm going to ask for planning officer advice on that 
Yeah, I, I well, I've already covered this, haven't I? Um, as I say, this has been looked at for four years now. This is the access before you. I don't think there's any room for any substantial movement in redesigning this access point. Um, therefore, there's, there's really no reason I can see for deferral. Councillor Thomas, do you still wish to go ahead with your proposal for deferral? I would have liked to think, Madam Chairman, there would be some way around this, particularly if we're providing, um, which is it's really, it was refused before on open market housing, and really the only thing that's changed in this instance is the magic words affordable housing. We all respect that, we all need that, but I just think I've got concerns still with that access. So that's why I've said there must be ways around this, and that's why I'm happy to. Well, are you, you are going against planning officer and vice councillor Thomas. So, um, sorry, Chair, can I just jump in here a second? Yes, please do. Uh, on top of what Matt has just said, the topic for the access was discussed by myself with the agent during the processing of the application and potential alternatives were mentioned if possible. No possible alternative has been was suggested to me by the agent in the processing of the application. So as Matt said, there's been quite a while here to look at possible alternatives. None have now been suggested. So I think it's very difficult to then look forward at deferring to look for an alternative access when none has been provided in this time that we've already had. Right, thank you for, for the advice. Councillor Thomas, I have to ask you again, just uh, it is your choice. Do you wish to go ahead with a proposal for deferral? Um, if that's the views of the officers, a combined effort, if you like. Um, I don't see what other alternative. I'm still um, not happy with it. Um, I know Councillor Kenny's not happy with it, so I'm, you know, I'll leave it to somebody else to propose, but I should definitely um, vote against the, the approval anyway, in any case. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Mike Thomas, you're next, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I'd like to propose as set out, but I'm very interested to see whether a condition uh, could be placed that the concealed entrance sign is placed uh, at the appropriate place that highways would be happy with now that we've got to this stage, which Thank they weren't willing to to go along when when um, we were discussing earlier. So that is my proposal. And would your proposal depend on that, that answer, or are you going ahead with the proposal? No, I would. I would accept their professional understanding of the situation, but I do do think that it would be an appropriate way of responding to the uh, concerns of the parish council and the concerns of the local member. Right, thank you. I'll, I'll go to um, officers in just a moment, but first of all, can I ask you all to lower your hands a moment, please? Could you all lower your hands? Councillor Dyer, could you lower your hand, please? Councillor Dyer, could you lower your hand? I need to speak. Now you can speak. No, I can speak. Can I speak now? No, no, I'm sorry. We're, we're at, at the moment. I've just had a proposal. I've got to seek a seconder, but I need to have the board clear before I can do that. Could you just lower your hand for a moment, please? Clear. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I've got a proposal for um, ex approval as set out by Councillor Mike Thomas. Can I have a seconder, please? And that's Councillor John Fitter. Thank you, Councillor Fitter. Chairman, could I just clarify with the proposer and seconder that they wish to include the uh, additional condition which was referred to by the planning officer regarding uh, the occupation of the property by permanent residents? Uh, yes, can we go? Yes. Yeah. Happy yes. With that. yes, yes. And I'm happy also to support um, the suggestion made by the proposer that there should be a sign saying concealed entrance. Thank um, you. It's, but it's not binding on it, as um, Councillor Thomas said. No, but, um, we'll, helpful. Thank you. We'll, Thank you. We'll, we'll go to the officer to find out if that is um, possible in a minute. But there was still a little more debate. Uh, so, um, mm -hmm. Councillor Fitter, can you lower your hands, please? Now, did did anyone else want to speak on this now? 
we've got a proposal on the table and this has been seconded. No, that, that's no, good. Really yeah, right. Um, back to the officers. Uh, could the highway officer, could you comment on the concealed entrance sign, please? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, by all means, if 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 the approach is is as I as I understand it, um, potentially a, a favourable outcome for the application, um, then it it could be considered that concealed entrance sign um, may be appropriate in this location. But I wouldn't want to say um, for definite because um, it would also have to meet regulations uh, in terms of where where you may and may not place traffic signs. Um, that wouldn't necessarily be a decision down to myself. It would go to other other parts of highways before um, being given the OK. Um, so that just needs to be taken into consideration when when proposing a sign in, in this location. Thank you very much. Could I, could I assist you, Chair, on that one, please? Uh, um, yeah, uh, normally where this has been raised before, we would seek delegated authority to, to add anything to the Section 106 or a planning condition as yes. appropriate once we've done that investigation. So before a decision is issued, we would um, put the correct um, details on controls into the, any planning condition um, to ensure the delivery of that sign if it's agreeable to highways. Thank you very much. That might uh, reassure Councillor Thomas. Yeah. So I'm going back to Councillor Mike Thomas and Councillor John Fitter. Are you content to move towards the vote? Yes, uh, I'm happy with that. Thank you very much, Highways. And yes, Councillor I'm Fitter. content with that. Right, thank you. So we've got a proposal by Councillor Mike Thomas, seconded by Councillor John Fitter for approval as set out. Could we go to the vote, please, Emma? Thank you, Chairman. OK, I'll call your names out by roll call. So you're voting in favour of delegated approval. So Councillor Alvey? Four. Councillor Batters? Four. Councillor Brown? <coughs> Against. Councillor Bull? Against. Councillor Dyer? <laughs> Councillor Dyer? Oh. Councillor Dyer, could I ask that you unmute and Is that better? That's better, thank you. Are you voting oh, for the... delegated approval or against? I'm against the application. You're against the application. Okay, thank you. Councillor Fitter. Support. Councillor Greenslade. For. Councillor Jewell. Against. Councillor Kenny. Against. Councillor May. For. Councillor Simmons. No bore. Councillor John Thomas. Against. Councillor Mike Thomas. For. Councillor Tudor. Against. Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams. For. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to approve is being carried by eight votes in favour with seven against. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, we now move on in the agenda. Oh, by the way, the presentation is still on screen. Uh, we, we now move on to agenda item five. Any other business? There is no other business considered to be of urgency. So I just thank everybody in attendance today, councillors and officers, and see you all again next time. Chairman. Yes. Chairman, could I ask that we try and overcome the problems with the uh, buttons and microphones, etc., before the next meeting? Yeah. So. Sorry, would you believe it, Fred? You froze in the middle of that. Do you think you could say it again? Please. Yes. Do you think we could try and address the uh, use of buttons and the control of microphones before the next meeting? A little bit more practice you may needed by some. Possibly. Possibly. Yes. Um, well, hopefully the officers will be watching that. This and they'll, they'll know if they believe there's to, some training needed in uh, in yeah, areas. I, I'd like to back that up because this meeting has been a, a complete farce. I, I've never known so much wasted time this morning through. Chairman, people. I, 